scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Can you just hold hands with someone and begin to pray in the spirit? Just hold hands with someone and begin to pray in the spirit. Hold hands with someone and begin to pray in the spirit. Just make contact. Oh, like a bride waiting for her groom. Even so, come. Even so, come. Even so, come. Kaparakota shaprandi geratu sata. Shekete prete kete prete kete prash kata bara da bara da bara. Bena na ma na ma so Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. There is something that will leave heaven to this place. Keep praying. Keep praying, keep praying. Keep praying. Keep 
Rakata Barate Supra Begadi Banana Bala. Ah, keep praying. Rakata Barana Banana Bala 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 Hallelujah. We are going to pray one more time. If you are sick in your body, just lay your hands there. There is a strong healing anointing in this place right now. You are sick anywhere in your body. Lay your hands. Lay your hands. I see the power of God about to touch people in a few minutes. Miracles of healing. The Lord is healing migraine headache right now. There are people suffering from intense migraine headache. The power of God is touching you right now. Right now. Right now, right now, I'm seeing, um, I'm seeing a lady having severe, like, like menstrual cramps, severe menstrual cramps. Right now, as I speak, the power of God is touching, 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 touching. That pain leaves right now. That pain leaves right now. There is a spirit that has been walking with a lady. You literally feel as if there is a man walking by your side. That spirit is leaving you right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. That spirit is leaving you right now. This is Zion, the city of the Lord. There's someone, your voice, for a while your voice has been unable to be clear. It's like there's something hooking you. You're going to feel like fire on your throat right now. Right now. And your voice will come back to normal. Right now. Right now, hotness of the body. That's what the Lord is telling me. Father, we give you all the glory. Hotness of the body. Hotness of the body is living right now. There is someone you brought your mother. 
your mother is in this place she's been unable to sleep for a long time she can't even sleep but right now the power of god is coming upon her and that devil is giving way right now 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 there's someone you have a boil like a boil in your nose right inside your nose the power of god is touching it not only will it be healed it will disappear right away you will touch it and you will not feel anything right now the lord is touching the lord is touching the lord is touching i'm seeing a river in the realm of the spirit that's what i'm seeing flowing into this place a river is a river of miracles many will be swept by that river is a river that flows from the love and the throne of god it's a river bringing healing bringing healing bringing healing there are there are miracles going on healing miracles hallelujah hallelujah there's a spectacular miracle that the lord wants to do for many people hallelujah i'm seeing a group of people in the realm of the spirit you used to hear god in profound dimensions but from the beginning of this year something happened to your hearing and it's an attack from the gate of hell now please pay attention i'm speaking by the spirit it's an attack from darkness upon your hearing and it's like something has closed you some of you don't even know you are part of it i'm about to pray for you because that that prophetic dimension you need it to hear what i want to teach you tonight you need it there are some dimensions of spiritual communication that you cannot understand it scientifically and the lord is asking me to pray therefore father i stretch my hands on your people every gate of the prophetic that has been closed every gate every gate the hearing ear let that grace be released right now the hearing ear the hearing ear Sata many of you will hear the sound of angels instantly instantly inside outside those following on our social media platform the lord is opening the lord is opening prophetic dimensions the sharing of the spirit authentic sharing not nonsense an authentic hearing shakataba sheketekata rakatapakotosia for some of you it is restoration 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 and what happened to your hearing that you no longer hear the sounds of the spirit like fire is coming on the ear of people fire fire fire, fire falling on people fire a restoration of hearing a restoration of hearing a restoration of hearing lift your hands there are people here your dreams used to be prophetic but it was and my God, something is happening to your spirit man the hand of god is coming upon your spirit man the hand of god coming upon your spirit man right now dreams 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 shaka patata stretch dreams where you will understand the counsel of god in the visions of the night the counsel of god in the visions of the night the counsel of god in the visions of the night hallelujah hallelujah the last thing i'll pray for before we sit down is sensitivity listen let me tell you if you lack sensitivity in this season and in this time you will never be able to be in sync with what god is saying sensitivity is like breathing in the realm of the spirit to be able to understand the impulses of the spirit and align yourself with what the spirit is doing and saying he said the sons of Issachar they had an understanding of the time and they knew what Israel ought to do I want to pray for you 
there is a grace that makes men sensitive many of us used to be sensitive especially our sisters something has happened to your sensitivity but in the name of jesus christ i pray this is a mountain of the lord's house where grace is sufficient grace is sufficient right now i stretch my hands may that grace begin to fall on men and women let it fall let it fall sensitivity discernment sensitivity discernment sensitivity discernment to the speakings of the spirit sensitivity discernment to the speakings of the spirit mighty on your throne mighty on your throne you were mighty on your throne hey mighty on your throne you were mighty in this place. Mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. Mighty in my life. Father, we pray that you go ahead and do everything you intend for us to experience tonight. Right beyond our dimensions, right beyond our perceptions, right beyond our yieldedness. I know God, I pray that you activate strange things in the lives of people. Strange things in the lives of people. Please sit down carefully if you can. Tonight will be a night of strange impartations. If you can't just sit down and let your heart be open, let your spirit be sensitive, no carelessness, no distraction. Please, Koinonia is a place of impartation. You need impartation to rise and step into your prophetic destiny. There are times that certain things need to be activated. Nothing can cover for noise and stories. You must come into the reality of certain experiences and impartation is one of the platforms that can bring you into those realities. Once again, I welcome everyone. This is Koinonia. Tonight is a night of strange impartations. And there is a reason why God is doing it. There is a reason why God is bringing us to this dimension of impartations. It's not just for nothing. Listen, in the course of my teaching, I'll be very brief tonight. But in the course of my teachings, there will be different kinds of anointings just coming in. You get this in Koinonia. Koinonia is a place where things are activated. And so when your word comes, it will come upon you. Yours is just to be sensitive. As I teach, there will be dispensing of graces. Dispensing of graces. Be sensitive. Don't just hear what I'm saying. A time will come. Yours will come upon you. So it's going to be a noisy meeting. Don't worry. You will hear what I'm saying. But as I teach, people will receive things. Will receive things. Inside, outside, everywhere. You will receive things. Listen. The church must pay the price for a genuine anointing that will really be able to bring God to the scene. The church must pay 
pay the price for a genuine authentic anointing that will be able to bring true results for people the only way we can become a revelation of the Christ I'm telling you this is to contend for a dimension in the spirit that affords us the privilege of hosting superior dimensions of the presence and the power of God talk is cheap it's easy to make a lot of noise in the body of Christ it's easy to stand upon many doctrinal and theological dissertations communicating the things that we believe should be but in the final analysis people need to experience the reality of the kingdom and I think this is where a lot of we pastors have not done justice for people a lot of us are speaking prophets a lot of us are mighty pastors and apostles and prophets and bishops we can communicate spiritual reality but the challenge is when it comes to the practical demonstration of the essence of our communication we try to create all kinds of theological excuses so there are so many things we teach that God is there are so many things we teach that God can do there are so many realities we we whet the appetite of God's people by opening them up to the possibilities that can be in the spirit but it is so frustrating when people's appetites are to the apex yet we sustain the power and the life to experientially draw them into those experiences so we teach on healing we teach on different kinds of healing different dimensions of healing and then in the final analysis the sick person still goes back sick the cancer patient still goes back with, with their cancers we are happy about dispensing theologically arranged communications but the bible says listen the bible tells us that the gospel listen is not just about the excellency of speech right but the demonstration of power to the end that the faith of people will not be founded upon the wisdom of men but upon the power of god no matter what you say about God if you cannot bring him to the scene for me to relate with his might you have wasted my time I may applaud you for your intelligence and your ability to be flawless in your research but let me tell you something in the final analysis people need to be transformed demons are not a theory they are real sicknesses are not a theory they are real oppression is not a theory it is real poverty is not a theory it is real only preaching largely are theories blessed is he who comes in the name of our god blessed is he who comes in the name of our god blessed is he comes in the name of God. Hallelujah. The Lord showed me a vision a few days ago. And in that vision, I saw so many people in the church weary and tired. That's what I saw in the vision. Including pastors. I saw people seated and stranded. No message. Because everything to be preached have been preached. I saw members frustrated and humiliated and the Lord began to reveal to me that it is a strategy please pay attention it's a prophetic teaching tonight it's a strategy by the kingdom of darkness because when you study when you listen to my teaching why revivals fail I shared with you dear a strategy with which Satan uses to defeat many believers Satan will never strike you at your point of strength he knows that all men are human although we are divine there is a human component to us so the moment you are doing the work of the kingdom advancing the purposes of the kingdom fervent in prayer 
strong in the word, the devil will not attack you. He knows that there is one thing that is common to all men. It's called exhaustion. The reality of our humanity. That no matter how powerful you are, no matter how anointed you are, a time must come when the reality of your humanity will meet up with you. It is at that point that men are separated from the boys. It is at that point that only those who sustain a system in the spirit to continue will stand. I saw that vision. I saw faces I recognized and I could not believe that such great men could be weary. Now you see, a man of God can be weary and you will not know. Because don't mistake in the grace upon a man to dispense truth and his personal growth and progress. There are two different things. I can be as dry and weary as whatever, but when I stand upon this pulpit, the anointing that comes with my office will make me act so flawless you will not know that I'm at the verge of giving up. Are we together? Most times, we mistake in the grace and the unction that accompanies the office of a man to mean that because that grace looks ever fresh, ever flowing in power, that it necessarily means the person is highly motivated and happy. No, there are times I've been so tired, physically tired, going for meetings. And I, I can sometimes it looks like I can't stand for 15 minutes. But the moment I hold that mic, I no longer become Joshua Selman. An apostolic anointing comes and I can stand for hours. Now, you may mistake in my strength to mean that I am not weak. Do you know sometimes when I get back home, even to eat becomes a problem? Are we together? So I saw weariness in that vision. I saw many people gassing out in prayer. Literally like a meter. Just diminishing. I saw people gassing out in their world level. And one of the areas that I saw people crying. Is the area of not getting results financially and otherwise. It was frustrating people. I saw quarrels between people. Fathers, mothers, different people. I saw pastors fighting themselves. And I was wondering, what is the meaning of all this nonsense? And the Lord told me, this is what the devil wants to bring. He's taking advantage of the economic tide that is sweeping the nations as a tool. And he wants to wreak havoc in the lives of people. Are we together? Part of the advantages of a true apostolic ministry is to have an eye that sees. And the ability to perceive the impulses of the spirit part time. And communicate to people the realities that are the emphasis of God for that moment. That's why we pray for perception. Because there are many of us, if your perception were alive, you would have picked the signal. Let me tell you something. It's important to gauge your spiritual growth. Don't let men clap you into spiritual mediocrity. What are you an MOG for when you cannot perceive the impulses of the spirit? What are you a campus fellowship president for? Or a pastor or an apostle. When the things of the spirit happen. Discussions are going on in the realm of the spirit. And your presence cannot be registered. Because you have not sustained an ability to rise beyond your flesh. And understand the speakings of the spirit. Hallelujah. Ministry is not all about preaching. But the ability to perceive the impulses of people. When God makes you a leader, he commits unto you the destinies of people. It's your responsibility now to be in sync with the spirit. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 says, I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower. It says, and I will see what the Lord will say. Not hear what he will say. See, perceive, conceive what he's saying. When I saw this, my heart really broke. Especially when I saw faces I could recognize. I saw that people had gas out. Truly. Mothers who used to have a very strong prayer altar. I saw the thing going down. Usually it starts through carelessness. Here and there. 
even if you don't pray one week it doesn't matter there's grace for me i'll come again and then before you know it completely void of power and you know the interesting thing no matter how bad you are the devil will never strike you he's smart if he strikes you you will go for a retreat very fast and you'll come back so he will allow you to keep moving there is a threshold level it's like a gauge in the spirit you keep going down he will not strike keep going down one day he will aim at you and if not for the mercy of God and the prophetic he will hit you bad blessed is he who comes in the name of our God blessed is he who comes in the name of our God blessed is he who comes in the name of our God hallelujah I will share with you three keys the Lord revealed to me That if not managed will strengthen the power of darkness to cause the havoc that it plans to cause take note of this month july you see this month july there is there is intense warfare going on in the realm of the spirit those who are sensitive know those who are not sensitive just assume and move carelessly and foolishly until they become victims this month mark this month july you see is a month of intense spiritual building you need to build capacity for the months to come. Victory is assured, but the strength of many will be tested in the months to come. You will see this happen. The strength of men of God, the strength of people, their, their spiritual capacity will be tested. And only those who have built fortification in the spirit, the Bible says for us to redeem the time, take advantage of the time, are we together so the devil is attacking the prayer lives of people dramatically you see he's not attacking it by stopping you from praying I will show you the things the first thing that the devil is using to sabotage the prophetic advancement of believers and the church listen is exhaustion the reality of the weariness of our bodies the reality of that weariness exhaustion psychological exhaustion physical exhaustion are we together so when people gas out they come to a point where it no longer makes sense to wait upon the lord and trust the lord because many hopes have been disappointed many dreams seemingly look like they are shattered people look at their experience versus their prophecy and it does not match and so many are fainting including the great ones who should stand to strengthen many people and there's nothing to be embarrassed there that's why god is opening us up to it so that we will rise is god blessing us exhaustion weariness that fatigue that spiritual fatigue where you want to study your Bible and you just look at it and it looks like a burden. You want to open your Bible and study, it looks like a burden. You buy books but you don't read them. You buy DVDs but you can't watch them. There seems to be a spirit that takes advantage of our humanity and our weariness. So you are buying books. You are buying tapes. You are downloading messages. Those around will think you are taking advantage of them but you know that it's been a long time since you made contact with these resources not because you are not of God it's called weariness exhaustion even the young men shall faint and the youth will utterly fall he says that's the first thing that I saw that the devil is taking advantage of to destroy people just destroy people just destroy people the second thing that the Lord revealed to me is financial limitation write it down i saw a lot of people whose focus had been distracted and the reason was because there were no resources i saw churches groups people 
even people who used to participate actively in the house of God, prayer meetings, prayer groups, the reality of the stress and strain that lack of finances brings. A lot of people started asking themselves questions. Look, we're, we're humans. Let's go and, and, and solve our family needs first. And it's a plot. It's a plot by darkness. Are we together? Where believers go to pray and they can't pray because of financial weariness. And even if they pray, the entire circumference of their prayer is lamentation and a plea for open heavens. You may not realize it, but it's a strategy. It's a strategy. Listen, let me tell you something. Satan weighs the governments of nations like a treasure on a balance and manipulates them according to his desire. This thing called mammon is Satan's weapon of mass destruction. Mammon. Mammon. That spirit, the only spirit that Jesus taught that you can worship either him or that spirit. He never said Satan. He said you cannot serve two masters. So in any way, your servanthood must be registered. Either to God or to mammon. Hallelujah. In that vision, I saw people losing jobs. Companies downsizing people. There are not many times you hear me speak prophetically like this. But you write it and see. I saw it happening to people. Are we together? Several people confused. Even, do you know that pastors and churches went down financially because their members didn't have the means, you know, offerings and tithes and all of that. And it was a weariness to people. And subtly, the teachings about spiritual growth, the teachings about empowerment, intimacy, encounter began to diminish because the pastors were forced to have to continue talking about finances. It became as though it was the only key that would have to keep the people coming to the churches. Are we together? When I saw this thing, my heart dropped. And I said, my God, what is this? You have to do something about this nonsense because the devil wants to take advantage of the economic tide that is sweeping Africa and that spirit that is sweeping Nigeria. That bitterness, that offense. Many people no longer pay attention to God. You meet somebody and talk to him about spiritual growth and the person will even tell you to go away. Why? Because we have said it unapologetically in this ministry that when your finances is not secured it will affect your spiritual life there's no confusion about it i hope you believe what i'm sharing with you oh please you better do please you better do because it will happen the third thing i saw was it's like flies you know how house flies like a swarm of flies. Now there are times I've seen these things prophetically and I've shared them here over. But I saw a swarm of flies just coming across regions. Ah, and I looked at it and the Lord took my mind back to the plague. One of the plague that happened in the days of Moses. When those, those swamp of flies came around and began to consume people. And I had in my spirit the ministry of the devourer manifesting as sicknesses manifesting as tragic events and ultimately death i saw this thing rampant manifestation of mysterious sicknesses that cannot be diagnosed in hospitals they will check you with machines and say nothing is is happening blessed is he who comes in the name of our God Blessed are you For you come In the name of our God I'm not a prophet of doom
but I saw the tears in Nigeria in the month of September it was almost unbearable I'm not just listen to me I've not finished preaching I'm not a prophet of doom but I saw it was bad economically and otherwise it was it was like this country was completely clueless and at a point of a mess I saw people being um, what do they call it laid off from work completely laid off husbands wives laid off their services were no longer needed in different sectors including government sectors they downsized people because they needed to accommodate what was happening are we together I saw an increase in crime rate theft stealing including stealing people not just stealing things stealing people why is God revealing this to scare you no God is revealing this to strengthen you he will never bring a prophecy without a strategy just keep following there is always an exemption for the church but the problem most times is we don't pay attention there are people who hear what I'm saying now I'm, I'm sorry especially for elderly people they just shut down say all these idiots talking again and then until it happens and then we become victims of situations and circumstances you see let me tell you something prophecy prophecy in its purest form was designed not just to give people to make people privy to something that will happen the most important part of prophecy is the strategy for exemption not what will happen the strategy for exemption any true prophet that brings a word from the Lord especially if it's a word that is on the negative side if it came from God God must be able to speak to his people and say this is a strategy you can choose it especially for certain things that are written judgments you cannot pray them away but there is a system like the flood of Noah there was a system that was built called the ark like the passing of the angel of death upon Egypt the mystery of the blood of the lamb and the Passover right it was the mystery of exemption but you see the church we we have this ugly mentality which came from a misguided understanding of what the New Testament teaches I can relate with God I don't need to hear anybody leave me alone if he's so God will speak to me if God has not spoken to me I will not listen let me tell you something listen I was teaching the school of ministry students our spiritual growth is based on our personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ but the advancement of the kingdom is based on covenants you have to understand this your spiritual growth and my spiritual growth is based on my personal encounter my knowledge of who God is his ways and that's how I grow in the Old Testament it used to be through prophets and mediums but now the Bible tells us that Jesus has come as a mediator he's opened a new and living way to all of us we can now access God directly in terms of spiritual growth but the advancement of God's kingdom is not general God finds men and enters a covenant with those men to represent his dealings in a particular dimension and every time God wants to deal with a territory in that dimension it must come through those channels they are called spiritual tribes they represent the communication of God's purposes in a dimension so when you talk about faith every time God wants to bring his speakings as regards the word of faith there are spiritual channels he has entered a personal covenant with and aligned them to be able to communicate his purposes in that respect Bishop Oyedeko, Kenneth Copeland you can trace that spiritual tribe and they represent his communications in that regard are we together? there are other dimensions when the spirit of revival wants to fall upon the nation there are people who represent the spiritual tribe that communicates that reality to the world it's not general 
so your tapping into that possibility only becomes on the strength of your alignment with what god is doing when god wants to come in in the area of finances and prosperity i know that everyone will be blessed but there are people who have a personal covenant with god that represent his speakings in that regard you will never ignore their ministry and hear the current dealings of the spirit as far as that is concerned so the advancement of the kingdom is not based on personal relationship it's based on covenants god calls a man called abraham the first man in the bible who showed us that men can walk by faith with god are we together he is god's type of faith the only reason why we can tap into the possibilities of god as far as the blessing is concerned is on the strength of the covenant that god entered with one man called abraham are we together when god wanted to salvage a nation he used one man called moses entered a personal covenant with moses that afforded moses an unusual access to god beyond his personal spiritual growth because moses himself did not make the cut to the promised land how be it based on that covenant to an extent that although moses may have failed spiritually in the book of jude an angel came to carry his body and satan still wanted the dead body because they represent systems they are not just human beings they are systems elijah was a man who represented god's system god's covenant of reformation god's covenant of of um forerunning revivals he's called elijah the tishbite are we together so by the time you allow people to begin to corrupt your mind and say don't make it look like only some people can hear god no the idea is not a show of superiority the idea is an election by grace where men have become like trees they are like spiritual vines and your connection to them is how you are able to tap into certain possibilities i've shared it with us here abraham gave birth to ishmael with hagar is that true hagar was crying ishmael was crying but the bible says god had the voice of the young lad not the voice of hagar why because when god looked at ishmael he saw abraham and received and saw the covenant god more often times to say he blessed solomon for the sake of his father david Are we together when the kingdom was about to be advanced after christ came he got 12 men entered a personal covenant with them listen let me tell you there is a difference between those apostles and us we are equal in christ but they were men who entered a certain kind of covenant with god that represented the advancement of god's kingdom if satan killed all those 12 apostles the kingdom could not be advanced because it was through them that it would be spread that's why god protected them angels had to come and open prisons to force them to go out are we together one man called john the beloved had a personal understanding it was his personal covenant with god that granted him access to show us the revelation the apocalypse the unfolding of prophecy there are still men like that on the earth there are not many but there are in fact the system of god's electing these men is always in twelves there's no time to teach you on that that god's apostolic governing system is always in twelves so in in regions you will always find this number 12 the apostolic spiritual governing council of god they may not even know themselves but they represent God's order of activities. Are we together? But you see, when the devil wants to deceive you, he will bring pride and make you look like I can access the throne of God by myself. I, am, I don't need to hear anything. Even when God is giving a word of caution, most times we don't listen and we say, no, 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 no. I'm, nobody should do this and that and that. And then, you know, um, 
I don't even want to go into that, that teaching because it will take our whole time. As you know, I love the body of Christ. I am the last person who will fight the body of Christ. I love the body of Christ and I love the different dimensions of spiritual operation. But then I am always quick to attack imbalances, especially when they get to a level where they can corrupt the authenticity of the work of believers. The moment an imbalance gets so bad that it can bring you out of spiritual alignment, it calls for concern. Are we together? And one of it is, of course, as we know, the concept of grace. Are we together now? Now, when you understand the concept of grace and you isolate it with respect to other things that God is doing, it becomes an error. Grace as a doctrine on its own is an error. It only makes sense when you add it together and you piece it together with every other thing God is doing. When you study the book of Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, theologically speaking, contains the highest church truth. Are we together? Where Apostle Paul was teaching the church, he was giving them certain doctrines, the entire scope of a Christian experience. Six chapters, which were a communication of the entire activities of the believer. So it starts, theologically speaking, with what we call sitting, right? You've, heard, you've read that and many of you have heard it in different messages. It was, that revelation came by a man called Watchman Nee. Watchman Nee was the, the, the apostle that God used to communicate the realities of redemption in a very balanced and authentic way to the body of Christ. And so that position of sitting, the Bible starts in the book of Ephesians, teaching us how, in fact, when it starts in chapter 1, it never talks about us, it talks about Christ and all that he has done when you start reading chapter 2 it now brings us into the scene right we are now raised up with christ so the revelation of god's grace is seen in chapter 1 and 2 and it is true that the foundation of a believer's life is predicated upon the grace of god there are certain things that we can never have ourselves like righteousness it is impossible for anybody to have righteousness by himself. The Bible says the best of our righteousness is as filthy rags. And do not confuse righteousness and uprightness. They are not the same. Righteousness and uprightness are not the same. Righteousness is a gift from God. Uprightness is our response, the advantage, our, our work of faith. I'm just giving us, are you getting blessed? I just want to establish a few things before we continue it's very very important so the bible starts teaching us on the grace of god and all the possibilities that come with that grace all that christ had done for us in his death his burial his resurrection and his ascension into heaven in fact it was on the strength of that that paul began to teach in chapter in verse 17 he said for this cause I have a passion for you understanding this. This is the foundation of your victory in Christ. And for this cause, I, Paul, bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you, right? The spirit of revelation, you know, and understanding that your eyes been enlightened or flooded with light that you may know certain things. One is the hope of your calling. And then, you know, the power that raised Christ that was exalted when Christ was raised from the dead, you know, and, and all of that. And Paul begins to speak. He knew that the church needs to know that. But Paul did not just walk there. He didn't stop there. He began to talk about what is called theologically our walk of faith. Right? Character. Now you taking advantage of the grace of God. I told you this, there are two dimensions to the grace of God. There is the grace of God as unmerited access and there is the grace of God as power to live like Christ. They are all called grace. Don't just confuse them. Grace does not just mean what God has done and we receive by faith. There is a dimension of grace that represents everything Christ has done that we could not do. And he gave it to us. We receive it by faith. But there is a dimension of grace that empowers us to do we will do but it's not by our strength are we together and then he wraps up the book of ephesians with what is called the the you know uh, standing and then our, our, our walk and then you know sitting and standing then he talks of spiritual warfare 
our ability to contend against powers and principalities and listen every doctrine that must build a believer please hear me every doctrine that must build a believer must sustain all these components whenever there is a deviation from this pattern it will lead to error if you try to teach people how to do warfare how to do character and you forget the grace of god you will lead them into error and legalism are we together when you try to bring isolate the doctrine of holiness without giving men the foundation of faith you will lead to self-righteousness which does not hold any weight in the spirit and so it must be in that order the first thing believers must understand about god is not warfare is the grace of god and that's encapsulated in what we call the gospel of salvation a revelation of the substitutionary work of uh, uh, jesus christ which is a reflection of the love of the father so when we see that grace then our walking right now by faith is our own participation that's called the gospel of the kingdom our reward in gratitude and honor for that sacrifice for us and then our standing it says haven't done all to stand stand Now, let me tell you something. The part of this truth you ignore is the path the devil will use to destroy your life. You can't choose sitting as it were. Grace. You can't choose kingdom just like that and isolate it. You can't choose deliverance just like that. There's a series on it and you can get it after the service. It's called the full gospel where all these doctrines were examined one by one. There are imperfections, there are imbalances to the end that the bride of Christ will become perfect. He said, come and I will show you the lamb's wife. He said, and he showed me a city equal in length, equal in breadth, equal in height. And part of the possibilities in the kingdom is the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. God stations these men so that they can communicate the speakings of the spirit and it is that same order of god's system that was mimicked by the antichrist system when you read the book of revelations from uh, uh, chapter 13 and the rest the bible tells us that satan empowered the beast the beast will now empower the false prophets the same order the same way god empowers his apostles and prophets to communicate certain things satan empowers the beast who empowers the false prophets and then they continue carrying out their agenda so there is a system spiritual growth is not haphazard you don't choose how you want it's not even just how your pastor said so there is an irrefutable pattern that has not changed it did not change just because um god jesus christ came and died for us no it's an eternal pattern it was carved out of who God is, not what he is doing. Are we together? There are people who believe in miracles, but they do not believe in the prophetic and the apostolic. That lapse is Satan's authorization in their life. There are people who do not believe in the gift of the spirit, but they are well-meaning people. That lapse is satan's you know advantage in their life there are people for instance who believe in grace but they may not believe in holiness and righteousness and all of that and satan takes advantage of it there are people who believe in deliverance but may not believe in the grace of god and satan takes advantage and they are forever fighting every and anything the key is not exemption the key is balance everybody say balance say it again balance the key is balance because all of these things are components of the same system. Hallelujah. And so I want you to believe the prophetic is real. It is still functional. It did not die with the New Testament. The prophetic is real. Now I know that here and there people may have exaggerated certain dimensions of it. But it's not enough reason for us to throw the baby and the bad water. Lives can be rescued when we understand what God is saying. And the Bible says, he that hears, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. So if he's talking to one person, he's talking to the ecclesia, the church. 
Hallelujah. Pray one minute and say, Lord, I hear what you are saying. I'm not rebellious. I hear what you are saying. You are speaking to the church. I am part of the church and I hear what you are saying. I hear what you are saying. I'm not a rebel. I hear what you are saying. I hear what you are saying. Go ahead and pray. strategies right now that God revealed to me and then we we'll take some time and really pray. I want us to seriously pray tonight and God will grant us that grace. Are we together? If you fight economic empowerment get set to struggle spiritually. Promise made a statement when he came to receive the offering and he said having abundance of supplies will increase your prayer life and minimize your prayer points. How true you see, let me tell you something. This system that we live in, cosmos, is a system that was designed intelligently. Are we together? God made the heavens and the earth, but the system, the social strata, and its civilization was nicely modeled and built by Lucifer, the custodian of the Antichrist system. And he built it such that our civilization will only thrive on economic empowerment. Please listen. Are we together now? And part of the imbalance that we're talking about is what has produced believers who are prayerful, loving, but we have not paid attention to our finances. And in this season, our flaw is becoming obvious. Are we together? Many anointed churches are seen right now that they cannot buy generator for their prayer meetings many churches that will have to depend on rent or something the man the landlord may be an unbeliever and he may get up under the influence of a strange spirit and say no more use of this venue it is locked and what happens the sheep is scattered it's a strategy by the pit of hell because the bible says the borrower is and will always be slave to the lender so our concept of empowerment must be seen not just as a desire to be rich and to be money mongers. Please get this. If that is your thinking, you are already in error. The concept of empowerment is to rise to a level where we overcome the influence of mammon. That spirit that is, is compelling the nations to worship her. There is a spirit. It's called mammon. If you have not seen that spirit, just look around our government and you will know that that spirit is being worshipped. The obsession for the worship of images and the worship of Lucifer did not start in our generation. Right? Remember when a king built 90 solid feet go and said at the sound of music, everybody will bow down and worship. And your survival in that territory depended on your willingness to bow. Some gentlemen said, oh king, no. They found another system of exemption and they changed the tide. Businesses are bowing already. Churches are bowing already. Systems are coming to their knees. I've heard men of God who didn't used to talk about certain things and have been surprised hearing the way they are beginning to be so obsessed about financial principles that are not consistent with the ways of the Lord and the reason is because for every leader what faith is to the realm of the spirit that's what finance is to this realm you must pay the school fees of your child are we together and that reality 
is beginning to punish a lot of people to the detriment of their spiritual life but everybody said there is a way out shout he said there is a way out the way out of financial hardship in this season goes beyond investments goes beyond business let me tell you what the Holy Ghost told me you see if you do investments you need money to make money is that true you need money to make money if you do business you are selling products you are selling services and that's all right but the problem is that the products you are selling have a fixed price and cannot be manipulated ordinarily are we together meaning there is a limit to what can come into your hand there is a limit to patronage and all of that but the key i've said it again and again is when you become the product yourself not just that you offer services you become the service when you become valuable not just have things that are valuable but you yourself as a person you rise to a point where you become an epitome of value you have entered your financial sabbath i guarantee you the most expensive commodity for instance on earth is the anointing and when you have the anointing we used to jokingly say it sometimes with a jimmy how that we watch people who we know do not know one maybe one twentieth of the business principles we should know but because they possess the most expensive commodity on earth which is the anointing and its ability to provide supernatural solutions they exempt themselves from the tide and the grip of mammon so god's call for us in this season as believers to exempt us from the economic turmoil that is whipping the nations and that will inevitably come and lash a lot of people in nigeria is not only to surround ourselves with valuable things valuable things are important but be the value yourself and we have that advantage because the holy ghost is here to help us that's why i said your greatest business strategy in this season is to labor in the spirit and carry something authentic and supernatural you will enter the sabbath of your life do you believe what i'm saying please believe it i can sell palm oil is it not when you need palm oil that you buy it are we together i have palm oil in industrial scale but until there is a demand but you see let me tell you something the rev the world revolves around certain things that will never um, run out of demand one of it is the anointing one of it is the realities that come from the life of a man in partnership with the holy spirit such that even in your business you are offering much more than the product first and foremost you have risen to a point where you have become so valuable then any other valuable thing around you only becomes a support not the basis for your confidence do you understand what i'm saying as harsh as the economic climate is there are people moving as if it doesn't exist in nigeria please don't ever deceive yourself that everybody is crying let me tell you why we all look like we are crying because people have found out that if you don't cry with others the the anger and the pain they will fight you back so they just cry and say cry honestly god is, is faithful but the truth is not everybody is crying there are people who are far from crying they have found the key every one naira that seems to disappear did not go out of earth is somewhere it's in the hands of those who have paid the price to become valuable i made up my mind that as god grants grace i will pay the price to be so valuable because by god's grace my life and this ministry should not come to a point where we are stranded and the purposes of the kingdom becomes jeopardized simply because of a, a god called mammon Look at me do you know that there are many of our families we have tried to bring them maybe for the meetings 
and they may not want to listen. But how many of you know that if we buy something tomorrow and we say everybody should come and line up? Vim, Omo, sewing machine, bikes. You will see people who swore that they will never come here. You see them standing. Even if they will not use it, they will get it and go and sell it and quickly use the money. That's the reality of economic hardship. And from the vision the Lord showed me, listen, people will do things that you will not imagine. Do you know in the Bible, women ate their children? The Bible says, can a mother forget her child? This one, a mother remembered and still ate the child. That's what finances can do. You talk about prostitution is child's play. When poverty hits people, they will make calls that they did not made for years. You see, if you do not empower your people, don't blame them for perversion. And I found out that you do not judge spiritual seriousness just from the face. You can see someone praying, but knows that there are seven people whose daily bread are dependent upon them. They will go and sleep with any allergy anywhere and bring the money. They will even bring it and so project 10,000. Are we together? Say in the name of Jesus, I exempt myself from this economic hardship. Say it in the name of Jesus, I exempt myself from this economic hardship. The Bible says when men say there is a casting down for you, it says you will say there is a lifting up. There is a lifting up. There is a lifting up. But if you don't believe this, sooner or later, you will have to face the bitter reality of this prophetic word because it will happen. I want to be honest with you. I'm not one person who just prophesies everything I see, but I, I, I salute the government of this nation. I know that they are doing their best with what they know and whatever covenant they are part of, but I, I want to tell you one truth here. I don't see transformation happening very soon. Let me tell you the truth. All that, I've, and, and I, I, I don't mean to insult anybody, but a lot of people have given so many prophecies, you are going to see boom, not 2016. It will happen for those who have the strategies. But as far as the world is speaking, you have not seen tears. Wait till July finishes. I've, I'm telling you what I've seen. You will see people sit down and cry like children. I'm not talking of illiterates. You will sit down and gather your degree and shed tears on it. But for those who are hearing this thing and will pay the price to become valuable, I tell you, you will rise as if the devil does not exist. It has nothing to do with age. It has nothing to do with level of education. Hear me. It has nothing to do with gender. It has everything to do with having perceptions and receiving God's strategy for now. Don't sit down and confuse yourself saying this and that. I'm an astute businessman. Just keep quiet and let the Lord speak to you. I'm not daft. I understand business. If you hear me speak to you like this, it is what the Lord is saying per season. Let me tell you, what will give you bread is what God is saying, not what you know. What God is saying, the direction of God is the direction of favor. The direction of God is the direction of life. It's God speaking to us. You must challenge yourself to be valuable in this season. The devil is a liar. Kai, the devil is a liar. There is a spirit in Asia called Quatsi Quata. That's what the Bible calls Mammon. It's a spirit. Many of you have seen it. It's the image of a flying serpent. A flying dragon. That is the exact picture of Mammon. It's a spirit that will compel the nations to bow to its leadership. I assure you, many people will bow. The concept of 666 is not just something you receive on your hand and receive on your forehead. It's already happening. When a system compels you, receiving the mark is not just having a physical inscription. It's coming under the sovereign rule of that system so that you have no options. You have received the mark. 
Are we together? But God is going to grant us grace. We will come out in another dimension. No, 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 no. Listen, let me tell you. I don't know about you. But Koinonia will not bow to this system. There is a superior covenant. We have the rod of a higher priesthood. No devil, no spirit, no system will make us change our message to tone down the apostolic work God has given so that we can attract certain kinds of wealthy individual. That's what is happening to pastors right now. There are certain messages you cannot preach. If it is not rich man friendly, get set to sweep your church by yourself. So you have to tone down certain things. There are certain mainstream TV programs right now where you are not permitted to teach certain topics. It used to be that you can't mention the name of Jesus. But now they've taken it to another level. Certain topics should not be taught on mainstream. If you teach about pressure, how to manage it, how love, how people can, can come together, a gospel of universalism, marry anything, anyhow, anywhere, doesn't matter, you are, you are welcome. The mainstream invites you. But the moment you have an outspoken voice, the system will strangle you. And economic empowerment... Lack of it is Satan's weapon of mass destruction. It's worse than backsliding. Are we together? Pray in one minute and say, I must be exempted in this season. Please pray. 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 are you praying oh every time the devil try to bring his arsenal and fight the church god is always one strategy ahead one strategy ahead one strategy ahead one strategy ahead Nanta Ubangi Chika Isayabo Mongir Mama Sunanta Ubangi Chika Pray Mondo Kaka Sunanta Ubangi Chika Isayabo Mongir Mama Sunanta Ubangi Raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Lord, we will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Now, Sunanka, Ubangi Jika Isayabo, Nagir Mama Sunanka, Ubangi Jika, Nagau Kaka Sunanka, Ubangi Jika Isayabo, Nagir Mama Sunanka, Ubangi Jika. I tell you, we will not bow. Hey! Raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in awe of you. Lord, we will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in awe of you. The grace to be valuable that when men say there is a casting down the bible says your gates shall be continually open it will not be short day or night right that you will receive the forces of the gentiles that's what the bible says you can be valuable and exempt yourself from the economic whiplash hear me I'm not talking of business. I'm not talking of investments. I'm talking of being so valuable. 
carrying something that cannot be found in the earth realm carrying something that is not of an earthly origin hallelujah please sit down sit down I told you there will be lots of impartations we'll pray my passion is that something will come upon your life listen let me tell you something brothers and sisters when this glory of God comes on a man it will change you you will veto laws and walk as if Satan does not exist never trivialize the anointing it's a big deal I'm not talking of being anointed where you are competing with people and fighting no God raises you by his grace and puts you in a pedestal kabarataya no mammon no devil no policy affects you it's a realm it's a dimension we frown at the supernatural because we think we're in an intellectual realm. Many times when pastors speak, a lot of business people just say, these guys are daft, they don't know what they're saying. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The voice of God. The Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd. That is why I will not want. The Lord is my shepherd. A shepherd guides. He knows where the green grasses are. He says, he leads me. He leads me. And thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. Isaiah 48 verse 17. Right? I am the Lord that teacheth thy hands to profit. some of you this is what you will need you will step into a place and men will look for you who said where you are staying is too far you have not carried something when you carry something listen let me tell you when you know you are anointed when no price is too much to meet you you are really anointed when no price is too much to meet you have you watched people during foil scarcity they have their money but they still kill and they are not angry that's how valuable foil is when you get to a point where people don't mind trekking from anywhere to say i have learned that the wisdom of god is upon your mouth and we have come as a nation that's where joshua selman is going to is not an exclusive reserve of preachers power was never for preachers power is for them who will survive in this season because there are gates that you must stand against and it takes the anointing it takes unction not stories not preaching unction listen churches are closing because there's no results we argue and say it doesn't matter but they are closing the devil is closing them the devil is closing them people are coming in with devilish policies against the church you know why they have not seen our relevance by the time a city cannot do without the church no devil will close it no devil will close it listen so the key is not just making noise the key is rising to that point please hear me when you become valuable listen listen if i give you five hundred thousand to go and invest you can make money 
if I give you a product to sell, if this is 100 naira, everybody you sell to, you will sell at 100 naira. So you move at their pace. But when you become valuable, your reward is left to the perception of your benefactors. One person can see you and give you 100,000 because that's what he perceives. The next person can give you 10 million because that's what he perceives. It's the key to accelerating ourselves to enter that wealthy place. Let me tell you, some levels of businesses are too slow to supply the funds required for kingdom advancement. It takes being valuable. The queen of Sheba, there was no water on Solomon. She carried her treasure to Solomon. There are Shebas, there are Cyruses that must arise with their treasure. And I'm praying prophetically that someone tonight, an unction, an unction, an unction from the throne, an unction from the throne will come upon someone that will change your life where your voice becomes like the voice of God. Listen, let me tell you this. There will be no longer begging in the church. All that depending on the world system. No! The key is not to sit down waiting for someone to employ you. As good as that is. The key has been given to us. The Holy Ghost handing you the keys that can open any door and you will watch mammon mammon will watch you and not be able to do anything listen i saw this in a vision that the lord showed me many people will be constrained their, their life it will be as if they should die because the doors are closed let me quickly talk about the two points we're rounding up there is a key that will conquer exhaustion in this season. Please write it down. There are many weary people and it's natural to be weary. But let me tell you the key. Please hear me. I want you to write it. It's a very simple key. Spend time praying in the spirit spend time i didn't say pray in the spirit at will carelessly when you want spend time praying in the spirit i want you to fan your prayer life in a dimension that will be too hot for any devil bishop oyedeko said no matter how mad a man is no matter how mad a man is he will not enter fire in the name of madness are we together you want to survive the tides brothers and sisters let me tell you your prayer altar must be like the seven times hotter fire that they threw the hebrew boys the bible says those who threw them themselves were burned to death are we together you lie down on your bed you turn a little shaka where your prayer creates an effect you enter your house as you are shouting in tongues something is happening you are shaking gates prayer read your bible has always been the key to true apostolic and prophetic revival when you pray let me tell you no matter how dead your spiritual life is when you invest in prayer you will burn that devil to nonsense he must give you more. i don't mean prayer that you are just asking and begging and crying that's why i said pray in the spirit because for many of us our prayer in understanding is petition and languishing and pain and anger but you lock yourself and you pray i'm not just saying when you are in your prayer room you are moving on the road you are praying beneath your voice somebody drops a charm at you it backfires on him by night he has become mad are we together someone is carrying a talisman and you are sitting down and you are going to Sabo he will drop at main gates because the fire is too hot he makes listen he makes his ministers win spirits 
right his angel spirit and his ministers flames i've said it again i pity the herbalist that will make concoction and call my name as is it's not only that it will not work if it didn't work he has still insulted me he will fry to death physically physically i'm not i'm not motivating you you think they've not tried it how can you be leading a ministry like this and not tried it only god knows till we get to heaven before we know how many poisons we have eaten let me tell you something when your prayer life is alive and healthy anytime you are walking just imagine in your head fire literal fire are we together john wesley said set yourself on fire and the whole world will come to watch you burn set yourself on fire stop discussing things with people who cannot help you go and lock yourself your body says i'm tired you say you are joking as you begin to pray you will first feel weak for a few minutes keep praying it's normal just keep praying when you touch that escape velocity you will touch a realm where strength you cannot explain will land upon you you plan to pray for one hour you will stretch five hours believe me i know what i'm saying nobody starts praying just out of comfort it's like you are starting shake it you are tired you are moving you are tired keep praying don't say ah this and that the devil will tell ah, there's something in the fridge have you don't just keep praying oh apostle but i'm praying and thinking about women keep praying that's what is supposed to solve there is a level to which the fire will be too hot your flesh must bend and allow your spirit accent listen when the holy ghost is called fire it's not just what we do in church fire fire no he's real fire fire is a mystery those who will pray in this season will record unbelievable breakthroughs believe me travel you pray in the spirit thank god we have a very robust prayer department you come there and stretch it out with destiny after two hours your antenna is to the heavens any demon is flying above you they hang there they hang there because you are passing you are not even praying the fire will roast every devil around anywhere that's what we are talking about listen many of us are too cold that's why the devil will come and sit on your destiny and it will look like nothing is happening there are cold churches a spirit will arise from somewhere and just come and sit upon the man of god and his wife and his family but for koinonia no way shout no way fire when there is fire burning somebody will come with migraine as he's crossing that 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 junction to enter koinonia the migraine will just leave that's fire speaking that's fire speaking it works but if you walk it it's not a gift it's a labor in the spirit this is the labor dimension of spiritual growth men will pay you let me tell you your 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 job is to just become genuinely anointed by the power of god and you watch what god will do in your life it's what a jimmy calls transformational wealth that dimension of wealth that is tied to people rewarding you because the last time they shook your hand every gate opened every every gate open just by shaking you do you think they want to be your friend absolutely absolutely praying in the spirit becoming valuable praying in the spirit becoming valuable the third key in this season is the power of corporate fellowship the power of corporate fellowship if the devil can successfully isolate you in this season just know that you are quarter to die are we together there is a difference between isolation and solitude once the devil wants to destroy you let me tell you what he will do look up please he will use offense huh? and push away everybody every intercessor in your life you will fight with him everybody who has grace and love for you you will fight with him he will push every relevant person push you to the wall alone and then that's where you sit down there 
and become a victim of his assaults. A corporate life is a powerful key in the realm of the spirit. The power of a corporate life. That you come together and where I am almost giving up as you land with your fire based on unity of faith and the spirit of brotherhood before my fire jacks up your fire is roasting every devil that I came with. Are we together? Corporate fellowship. How good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. It is like the oil that flows from the head of Aaron. That priest down to his bed, down to his skirt. He said, for there the Lord has commanded the blessing. Corporate life. I'm a man of God of myself. You will pay for it in this season. You need corporate grace. Corporate grace. Corporate grace. Because no matter what you have seen, you will need that. Sometimes that corporate grace will help you confirm if the path you are walking is of God. The devil can isolate you and you just keep moving and you are flattering yourself until you land in fire. Are we together? But Koinonia, we are going to pray. I don't know about you, but for as long as you are genuinely connected to this ministry, you must be exempted from this nonsense that is ravaging nations. It's like an angel of death is, is entering families. Bam! Sickness. Incurable diseases. Have you heard recently how people are dying just from headache? They say somebody has headache before they rush him to the hospital. He's dead. How oh, come on? A woman is pregnant. Just when labor starts, she becomes deaf and dumb. Then she dies. We are going to drive that devil out of Zaria. Are you ready to pray? No, we are going to pray. There is a church in Zaria and we will pray. We will pray and drive it far and say we surround this city with a mystery that makes any enchantment not to be able to thrive. We represent God's seat of, of governance in this city and we must pray. There's no room for carelessness. We must pray. Lift your voice and pray in tongues for a while. Make sure you participate, everybody. Don't be tired. We are praying. Kata pras kata para tekete. Shaka taka tosho paka tawa daga daba 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 Young and old, everyone pray. Shapa rapa tosho to preka teke repa katosh. Enkre te seka te para daba para teka shiga daba daba. Rante ke te prosho to paka daba 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 Shapa karaka to soto prekete Emprekete go soto koto parada marada ba Shikete parada marate sekete prekete bedele bosh Are you praying? Lente kra soto parata kate pretekete nebaka Hallelujah Anointing for Anointing for Let the power of the Holy Ghost Anointing Like you to sing it as a prayer from the depth of your heart. family members are depending on us not our preaching 
the activity of the power of God upon our lives. There are people standing here. Let me tell you, listen. This thing that I saw, there are families I know. I saw it happening to in that vision. And I'd like you to pray. You are not desiring the anointing out of covetousness. You need it. There are, there are thrones and dominions that must be subdued. And Apostle Joshua Selma may not be there. The goal is not to have one superstar. The goal is that you carry fire and go to your regions and begin to speak the purposes of God. And while you are doing that, God will compel men to lift you. It has nothing to do with ministry. Please, I'd like you to pray and say, Father, let a strange unction fall upon my life. Oh, let the earthly become heavenly. Let the earthly become heavenly. Let the earthly become heavenly. In this season, they that will survive must be men of power authentic unction unction beyond imagination unction beyond argument unction beyond argument unction beyond argument ta 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 ba ta ka para ka ta lord send that fire upon my life Send that fire upon my gifts. Send that fire upon my degree. Send that fire upon my PhD. Send that fire upon my business. Send that fire upon my company. Send that fire upon my church. Send that fire upon my family oh yes send that fire upon my life send that unction upon my life the earnest expectation of creation awaits my manifestation thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the time to favor her yea the set time yea the set time yea the set time yea the set time yea the, the set time yea the, the set time hallelujah listen listen one encounter with the anointing can give you an open door that your lifetime will not exhaust it if you believe what i'm telling you one encounter one one encounter can open a financial door for you that will wipe your tears one encounter can make you a friend to somebody who will pay your beans a friend with him forever one encounter listen listen hallelujah i'd like you to pray a prayer you've heard us pray it here but i want you to pray it with all your heart everyone appointed to reward my grace i compel them to appear go ahead and pray it's not enough to have an anointing there are men who can reward your grace there are institutions send them oh god to koinonia 
send them to your people men and women who need what you carry your entrepreneurial anointing your leadership anointing your spirit of motherhood send them to my life oh God men and women who have what it takes hallelujah hallelujah listen listen look up look up I know very anointed men and women they love God passionately but they have never met the people assigned to bless them you don't preach for money you don't carry the anointing just for money but you see God designed it in such a way that as you dispense the realities of the kingdom there is a feedback system that should empower you so you continue being effective are we together listen the day you stand in the presence you see many of us are around people who love our gifts but do not have the grace to reward it are we together you can labor and pray and fast and go and preach somewhere and someone will pat your back and say wow you are an awesome man of god i've never seen a man of god in this state like you that's not enough reward but there is a way you can have an encounter and someone will come and bring a generator buy you a car and say what does it take to stop you from thinking about the finances if you are such a voice i should sponsor you rising to any level there are men like that there are some of us the value you have now let me tell you sincerely the value you have now you is, is enough for you to be blessed forever but you have not encountered those who have what it takes listen there are pastors hear me who until you preach somewhere where your helpers are that's what will expand your church all of a sudden it will be like they are hearing you for the first time yes i know there are millions of men of god in nigeria but there are others assigned to honor you 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 can be singing singing songs laboring and traveling from pillar to post but if you can discern god can send you to somebody who has the means but needs your music when it was time for the lifting of david a spirit was upon saul and saul needed a musician to drive it all of a sudden they went and fished out david how many times did david play for saul when he played just once saul loved him there are circles that i have entered and i ministered once and god connected me to people who will bless me forever and that day it wasn't even as if i was saying anything it was just that god connected me to people who will be blessed tomorrow when asaba a mighty meeting happening in the stadium and we're going to minister they started preparing for this meeting tomorrow one year one year they came to book one year in advance they have been praying logistics publicity all over the city and we are going to go and storm the gates of hell there is some you are not assigned everywhere look you need to pray that those assigned to honor what you carry otherwise you'll be frustrated trying to be everything to anybody lift your voice one more time and say direct them oh god direct them direct them to me oh in this season Direct my blessers. Direct those you have sent to be blessed by my ministry. Direct those you have been sent to be blessed by my business. Shabakatapos on the prosasike ruta sabarikata. Direct them. You are a prophet, but not to everyone. That God will bring the ears of those who have been anointed to hear your voice. You are an apostle, not to everyone. That God will direct the people, the institutions. Hallelujah.
going to be praying that in this season please hear me that in this season God will grant you grace to have passion for the house of God that you will not allow the devil corner you somewhere and destroy you and destroy your family he said as for me and my house I don't know about you but as for me I have made up but the Bible says they that be planted no flimsy excuses oh we are tired today they that be planted in the house of God they will flourish in the courts of our God I'd like you to pray passionately and say Lord grace and passion for your house grace and passion grace and passion for your house supernatural grace supernatural passion for your house for your house for your house hallelujah hallelujah we're rounding up one category of people who will be exempted from any nonsense in this season are passionate and addicted soul winners listen listen there was a time they needed money to pay for tax it was a period that they needed money desperately they had come to collect tax and jesus said go and catch fish and fish in the bible is symbolic of souls when they caught those souls in that mission work they found money as they were preaching god provided a way as they were preaching fishers of men they went to fish and they said open the mouth of that fish as that fish testifies the greatness of god and confesses with his mouth the lordship of christ you engage a law automatically that brings you well hear me please believe what i'm saying there are many peoples here who love god we are prayer warriors but we are not so winners you stand up alone and drag yourself to koinonia you wave your roommates you wave your family members you come here and get blessed while you are getting blessed the devil is using them to destroy your blessing you go back home a soul winner is an intercessor lord you must change my family members there are people who can come on friday and say look i'm going around this place have you heard about koinonia you've never really come you see this this our shame big boy big girl there are no big boys and big girls in the kingdom it takes passion when you are doggedly involved in soul winning you schedule seasons of exemption i can tell you this i can tell you this are we together you are in your office you are there and you leave every other person someone tells you uh -uh, um the devil is trying to manipulate my life or god jordan did something today that blessed me so so much some people came to his shop to buy books and the way they began to talk at once he knew it was a demonic situation god has given you spiritual intelligence there is a way you hear people talk what they are saying in the realm of the spirit is i need help you just listen to them and say bye-bye the moment they began to talk you know oga jordan said this and that they wanted to see me and he said oh it may not be easy to see me. but he bought communion and took a bike and came and said i should pray on the communion and returned it back and gave the people and i was looking at him i said why won't he explode let me tell you if god if your life becomes an epitome of support for god's interest forget about begging this is the god i serve you may not know all you need to know but that your life can find space to bring god this is how this ministry started every night somebody was dragging somebody come and get filled with the holy ghost come and get born again you may not have the power to change them but you have what it takes to invite them some of you 50 naira is what you need to draw a soul ah koinonia has a crowd it's not about competition of crowd it's about destinies that must change are we together what's wrong with calling your loved ones and say there is there is a platform now to hear this online 
since you think you are too sick to come connect to the miracle service you see let me tell you something this is what we do that produces some of the results anybody that is too big to win souls is too big to experience the favor of God if you are too big to win souls too big to win souls ah I preached and they insulted me so what didn't Jesus say it blessed are you when men persecute and revile you rejoice for so they did the prophets and the rest you have social media platforms that you can use as platforms to draw people to the house of God where they can be blessed you see until you see yourself as part of what God is doing you are not entitled to his blessings when you see yourself as somebody who just comes for koinonia leave the workers and the ministers when you exempt yourself you also exempt yourself from that covenant of blessing he said if you are the children of abraham you will do the works of abraham i'd like you to pray before i speak over our lives lord grace to be intentional about saving people from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light open your mouth and pray open your mouth and pray open your mouth and pray grace to be a conduit for someone to be filled with the holy ghost grace to be a channel for someone to receive the teachings that will change their life many people are not faithful that's why they pray they fast oh god dry fast seven days 40 days lord give me more anointing give me this give me that and then one day god leads you to one old woman and god says take care of this woman your destiny is to walk in the healing ministry but he won't start by giving you the healing anointing he will start by creating compassion in you take care of this old woman and you say oh god this old woman how much will i get from this woman i need something that i will shine so that from that shining to be on youtube and then it will be on all the social media platforms and up i go and god says you see that there's no faithfulness and while that is happening god is watching one young lady somewhere taking care of the woman mama are you okay and she's she's writing her promotion exams through faithfulness she may not know but she's walking herself to a realm of the anointing one day she'll finish taking care of that woman and say father thank you for the privilege my mother was never alive for me to be able to take care of her but thank you for giving me such an old woman and the heavens are open over that young lady a strange anointing comes upon her two years later that lady is walking in a dimension of the healing anointing that nobody can explain and people criticize where did this girl come from from nowhere i've told you there's nobody that comes out from nowhere that you are not aware of the training does not mean they were not trained there is nobody that comes out of nowhere it's a lie when you are in the cave of adulam it's a lonely place when you manifest people say ah this person is lucky no there's no luck in this thing is god speaking to us many of us god trusted us with finances we were not faithful many of us today if i tell you lift your prayer request now you will see prayer point one breakthrough prayer point two financial rest prayer point three financial favor it's still the same thing you are writing just different versions so that however god wants to answer it he should just answer it are we together lord increase in membership did you know while i was praying i was already set to come the rain started all i was doing i i found tears coming out of my eyes because i was thinking i said my god my god this these people now how 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 do we manage these people but many of you ah, they've come let them come you know you are the superstar when you think like that you will never rise 
don't forget that men may not know why you are looking at this but there is a god who has the all-seeing eye that looks at you and knows that this man of god should not rise are we together many of us want resources as i've lifted this one thousand now many of you have been looking at it you are not even hearing me again listen you are not faithful if you are faithful is proof that you are a steward can god give you this and say let me have it back and you say lord it's yours is proof of faithfulness lord after all it came from you i i you took me from nowhere soaking gary if you have given me this if you make a demand it goes there are many of you once your hands hold it it's only a need a secular need that will release it the voice of god has no right to make you release this and then you want lots of it and we keep joking that we are having dreams and seeing god is not stupid this system is very orderly once your heart is not with god you won't find anything are we together i've shared this story here once upon a time in this area then nobody knew me nobody i was invited to go and minister somewhere and just like it rained very heavily tonight i had prepared fasted prepared to go there and then the rain started and the people were expecting me and that time there was no protocol to come put umbrella etc all of these formalities that was how i i rolled my sleeves rolled my trouser and held my bible i started praying in tongues in the rain lord don't mind me being soaked just bless your people if your people are blessed i am satisfied are we together now i remember going there and then to make matters worse the church didn't even make arrangement for umbrella to receive me it was then steve strings who saw me from outside and collected he was also invited he collected an umbrella to run go and receive me outside when i came in they asked me to wait they had to shift some people in front to create space for me to come and sit down it looked painful it looked ego stinging but it was a test of faithfulness can you be faithful even when your reputation is being insulted not everybody will insult your reputation keep forbearing with those who don't value you then you will qualify for those who can value you there are some of you today you will go to minister somewhere they will disrespect you some of you are intelligent business people surrounded by those who have no value keep at what you are doing you will come to a point where god will bring you to people who can recognize the grace you carry and my goodness happy are you when you enter that season in your life where you are surrounded by those who have a recognition of what you carry and will be willing to bless my life was not always like this this ministry was not always like this the first crusade you see crowds everywhere and we're happy many of you who follow me on facebook or follow follow the ministry uh, on facebook and follow what we are doing and you know all the crowds and the things that happen when every time i travel many people just see it and think it's just because he's anointed it's not just because i'm anointed with all humility what you are seeing is a product of many years of faithfulness i've shared with you our first crusade it never you see the secrets of men are in their stories don't just hear the story discern the message are we together i told you about our first crusade i think we're about 20 or so the entire crusade ground i'm not sure we're up to 50 the first crusade we prayed fasted organized when it was time to pray for the sick the whole team had the opportunity one-on-one -on -one. it was a test of faithfulness many of us do not want to start small as a student you want to wear the same cloth with a bank manager and so you open your gate wide for a devourer to come and rubbish your life and keep punishing you are we together there are men of god who start in ministry everybody they see is their colleague take it easy move gradually no i'm anointed if not because of condition don't i have a better revelation than kenny and god keeps you there say stay there i just caught a new revelation there's nobody to hear you because there is no track record 
you can look at a pastor who doesn't seem to have any serious revelation and wonder why God keeps him there faithfulness all he may say is God bless you God lift you God anoint you and then you are there in your pride and arrogance I just finished pieces in the book of Ephesians and you will remain there for many years is God speaking to us never be ashamed of the track record of faithfulness Lord this is the level of grace that you have given me I am happy I am proud of it Lord you have given me the anointing to clean chairs I know that you have called me to be an apostle to the nations but in this season my assignment is to clean chairs I receive the grace to do it faithfully not just to clean chairs and say Kai oh God if not just people me cleaning chairs and God says that's it you see that and you'll never rise everybody say faithfulness say it again faithfulness Matthew chapter 25 we're going to read three verses 21 23 and 29 thank you Matthew 25 we're reading 21 23 and we're reading 29 I just want to show you something and then we'll begin to pray this was the parable of the talents five two and one talent and this to the one who had five his lord said unto him after being faithful he said well done good and what faithful servant thou hast been faithful over a few things let me show you how greatness happens in the kingdom thou hast been faithful over a few things what's your reward i will make thee ruler over many things when you are promoted in the kingdom many things happen to you one the anointing upon your life is multiplied number two your operation becomes easy number three god expands your self-influence to cause more people to hear your voice is a product of faithfulness you have been faithful over a few things i gave you a teaching anointing and i did not give you an anointing for miracles and you were not ashamed to teach the people as best as you knew to every time they ask you man of god why is it that we don't see miracles in your life be patient i'm coming i'm not ashamed to say god is bringing me there for now is the teaching grace he has given me i will teach i will make bible study notes and god is saying this is a man who will not only be a good shepherd he will be a good manager of my anointing and one day that man comes to a meeting and all of a sudden an impartation comes upon him the dimension that has been absent is now supplied by the spirit he goes back not just as a teacher but as a worker of miracles 23 to the man with the two talents he said his lord said unto him well done good and faithful servant same thing thou has been faithful over a few things so it's not the size of what you were given the same commendation i will make thee ruler over many things let's go to 29 29 for unto everyone that hath this is a mystery in the kingdom that when you have is a sign that you were a good manager and the reward is that he shall have what abundance of anything abundance here doesn't just talk of finance abundance of the anointing abundance of influence abundance of access to revelations and then it says but from him that hath and is not faithful now he says even that which he had shall be taken away it is not only satan that takes things away god too takes things away are we together now not every reduction is caused by demons there are reductions that are a testimony it's a report card from god to you that something is wrong with your stewardship when god increases you members rise today and mysteriously members just go down sometimes it could be that it's a message from god that i trusted you with 30 people and i observed your stewardship your stewardship does not merit multiplication you rise in finances and then sometimes you just go down never to rise again it could be a message that you need to upgrade on your stewardship you rise in influence and all of a sudden you find out within a season 
all your helpers are no longer there all the people whose voice who who listen to your voice and acknowledge your voice are no longer there it could be a sign that you are abusing the privilege of stewardship are we together the prayer that you need to pray in this season is for God to help you that whilst you are waiting for a supply of greater dimensions of his grace but that he grants you the fortitude to be faithful if God gives you 10 naira be faithful if God gives you one shoe polish it don't sit down running your eyes on every shoe and say don't worry except God is not my God I'm coming and and that shoe will say you are not coming this is not how to get me you get me by washing the one you have it's a rubber shoe wash it it's a 200 naira trouser wash it are we together now we live in a society that applauds people for living a fake life that claps for people for jumping seasons and as soon as they clap for you and as frequent as they clap for you that's the same way they will clap against you because every time you jump up you must go down but when you grow up you remain up the difference between jumping and growing is that you are still connected to your root when you jump you are suspended nothing backs you no support so you must come down when you grow up the tallest building in the world is still connected to the earth that's why it stands nothing suspended has an a, a, the ability to stay indefinitely when they send satellites to orbit the earth and orbit other planets and all of that after a time requirement because they are not connected to the earth they must be sent back planes don't fly indefinitely in the sky they get to a point where they must make contact with the earth again for some of you here this is your miracle service tonight the lord is speaking to you you are living a fake life go back to the basics let me tell you this don't ever generalize success just because everybody around you is successful does not mean you are successful go back and learn the principles corporate success is deception are you hearing what i'm saying now we are all successful a day will come life will separate you and you stand as an individual and it will be a test of your values whether or not it's like a defense the way students do defense you will need to defend and validate your success any door god has not opened for me i'm not under pressure to go because when he opens it he will open it in honor do you know if god does not open a door your tenacity can force that door to open that you forced a door and it opened a man can go around with complimentary cards i'm a man of god i'm a gospel artist in fact you've not had anything like you just invite me and watch what happens you can go around and out of the 1000 invitations you beg for you may get one or two or three or four and you call it increase you see when you open the door by yourself you have to keep it open by yourself but when god opens it god when he opens it he keeps it by his own hand the hands that lifted me will uphold me to the end i will not be afraid there is a hand that lifted me will uphold me to the end i will not be hallelujah Years ago, I had a conversation. We we're about to pray with a gentleman, and he asked me a very honest question. He said, Apostle, I've come for Koinonia and I've seen the crowds of people. And he asked a question. He said, Can you reproduce these results? And I said, That's not me to answer. You are asking time, not me. Keep watching. And I think two weeks ago, he sent me a text. You know, just joking. I'm, I'm just saying it. And he's just sent a text. And he said, Apostle, you are dangerous. I say, I'm not dangerous. The laws of God are dangerous. 
it is not me it is the laws of God whoever will keep these truths it will work for you are you getting what I'm saying even if you are afraid of yourself trust his laws and watch them shock you and make a wonder out of your life brothers and sisters listen to me in a few minutes now we're going to begin to pray and many of you will stand and watch your life change as if it's magic it is not just because a man who is anointed is standing before you there is a system in the kingdom we make our boast first in the lord and then in the power of his might his might the power of his might the power that is released when his laws operate those who don't understand will look at these things and think it's boasting it's not boasting it's true the predictability of god's principles hallelujah i challenge you today that much more than the miracles you are receiving you must trust god to go back and say lord teach me your ways we reign in this kingdom we're about to pray now i want to show you a very dangerous scripture that god opened my eyes to brothers and sisters if god does not open your eyes to see how a thing works you may never know do you know that in every challenge that you have right now a way of escape is there but it takes god to open your eyes psalm 77 turn there let me show you something psalm 77 and verse 19 psalm 77 verse 19 give us from amplified if it's possible lion of judah my trust is in you alpha and omega my trust is in you i am that i am my trust is in you tonight i put them on you my trust is in you it says your way in delivering your people was through the sea listen carefully the same sea that was an obstacle he said their way of escape was inside that water inside that trouble he says and your paths through the great waters how can you be in trouble and god says in that trouble that's where your answer is but it takes your eyes to see it god hides a formula in your pain and keeps it there until revelation opens you to it he says your way of delivering your people was through the sea the same sea he said that your path through the water yet you pass through it and cover it and nobody can trace your footsteps this one give us king james again it will take revelation for you to know how can i look at him water challenges and great waters he said thy way is in the sea in that rain challenge is a formula that can make you a landlord but it will take the spirit of revelation in that sickness that brought you to koinonia is hidden a mystery that can bring you into the healing anointing it says thy way is in the sea and thy path in the great waters and thy footsteps are not known god what kind of god are you you do something and cover it so no man can just look and say ah I, uh. but when he opens your eyes all of a sudden you will discover that so the water can part i never knew and all of a sudden there will be dry ground and you walk to it and the egyptians will think and god will cover it and say i don't open it for everybody it is a way but not for everybody are we together these are some of the deep mysteries about the anointing sometimes you see me give you instructions that don't make sense shout jesus keep quiet it does you will try it and it won't work it's a mystery there is a way in it there is a pathway that when god opens your eyes to the systems of the kingdom then you can see things that don't make sense and make wonders out of them god is speaking to someone here that the prayer you are praying the answer is already within your environment all it takes is for your eyes to see 
Hagar was banished by Sarah. The Bible says she was in the wilderness dying of test. The young lad cried to heaven. When an angel appeared, all of a sudden they saw an oasis bringing water. The water was there but her eyes could not see. The ways of God. And let me tell you, this is why we come to how to the house of God because there is something about the corporate gathering of God. Give us verse 13 of the same scripture. Give us verse 13 of the same scripture. Go ahead and read. Thy ways, O God, where is it? Is found in your sanctuary. When we come here, it says in your sanctuary, in your house, you have you have ordained a place that when we meet you will show us a way when god put this miracle service and called this ministry and put all of these things it's not just a ritual there is a mystery about the sanctuary he has ordained that every time you come before god he must open a way so don't carry your challenges and come and you are wondering and say i went to every church i don't know what the church you went to believe but in this sanctuary there is a way there is a way i dare to tell you there is a way man of god i have been in i've gone everywhere with all due respect i don't know where you went to but there is a way in the sanctuary solomon dedicated a place and said lord let me tie a covenant to this sanctuary if any man prays and turns this direction not for the sake of their faith for the covenant in this place answer them when they were about to kill daniel in the days of that of, of nebuchadnezzar daniel opened the gate and faced jerusalem he, he was afraid he couldn't depend on his faith he opened the door and said lord i engage the covenant that covenant that solomon made with the temple in jerusalem it is not only a man that can bring miracles a place can be anointed to birth miracles it was in a place that jacob went to sleep he never met a man but he met a place and that night the heavens were open and he saw a ladder that connected the heavens he said this is the house of god this is the gates of heaven tonight i want to stir up faith many of you have come you have made sacrifices pastor femi thank you thank you so so much praise the lord many of you have come from several places you have made sacrifices please don't come here wasting your time and don't come here wondering let's see what god will do already i can answer you you won't get anything already let me let me be honest with you because god is not a magician but there are people that come here determined and say lord i have seen you in this place i can't go back this way that something must shift in my life something must change in my life not all of you may be trusting god for sickness for healing you know but many of us are trusting god for one thing or the other i'd like you to believe there is a way in the sea i bring you a word there is a way this kingdom operates by mysteries the bible says there is no temptation given but that which is common to man you are not the first to have house rent issue you are not the first to have financial issues listen carefully you are not the first to have academic issues you are not the first to have excuse me spiritual issues you are not the first but though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river. That's a part of this song I like. Though we are few, there are witnesses. There are people who have been healed. There are people who God changed their lives overnight. There may not be many, but they are on earth, testifiers of His faithfulness. As a testament that if God did it before, he can do it again and this is the song we'll be singing forever oh is the lord oh is the lord listen it is our confidence in god 
and our confidence in his ways that gives us the audacity to gather people and say come he will change you without the presence of God and access to the ways of God we are we are scammers we are not we are not just liars we are scammers why do you gather people and tell them come we dare you to come we call a solemn assembly not only because we know God by the privilege of his grace we have found grace with him and he has made us stewards of the mysteries Ephesians chapter 3 this will be the last scripture Ephesians chapter 3 verse 2 from verse 2 it says if ye have heard Paul is speaking of the dispensation of grace of the grace of God which is given me to you what for your sake how that by revelation verse 3 he made known unto me how did Paul know it by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in few words verse 4 whereby when you read another word is whereby when you experience it you may know the basis ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ verse 5 a mystery that has been hidden in other ages let me tell you some of the things we are doing although they are spiritual although they are biblical they are mysteries that have been hidden they are there the same way many people swam through the Red Sea although there was a way it took a generation of men to be open to that mystery there are many mysteries that control results that have not been routed by many but the bible says that in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets how by the spirit by the spirit it was a revelation that god gave me that people write their requests and come and drop here it's not something that i copied from anywhere it's a revelation stupid though but look at the testimonies that have come out from it are we blessed now god's servant bishop david oyedeko was given the revelation of feet washing a revelation that had not been known to anybody people read it and all of a sudden the testimonies that come out of it people had communion people take communion in orthodox churches and different churches and just take it even while they are drunk but somebody came with a light about communion and all of a sudden people take communion now and cancers just die there are mysteries brothers and sisters there are many people that never knew that the house of god is powerful praise the lord are we together so you must understand that god in this season wants to shift you but he won't just shift you just by saying shift there are mysteries tonight i bring you a word there is a way in the sea hallelujah there is a way there is a way there is something god can do about your finances there's something god can do about your family situation you left fire on the mountain and came back you wait until the red sea parts and god will rubbish pharaoh tonight in your presence rise up on your feet begin to thank the lord for what you have heard tonight cry for the grace to be faithful go ahead cry for the grace to be faithful cry for the grace to be faithful lord grant me the grace to be faithful grant me the grace to stay as you lift me grant me the grace not to rush seasons in my life grant me the grace Grant me the grace. Hallelujah. Just pray one prayer. Lord, change my story. 
visit me tonight lift your voice and pray pray with faith change my story visit me visit me tonight hallelujah tonight is an unusual service because time has gone we're going to be very very fast very very fast at that um, like I told us we're going to start praying for the sick we'll start by praying for the sick and um, now this is how we're going to do it because of because of those of you outside don't worry you don't worry wherever you are you will be attended to are we together you will be attended to so hold on before i ask the people to come you don't have to just cooperate with the ushers if they need you to do anything just just it's a temporary inconvenience we're doing this just to be able to manage time and to do all that we have to do hallelujah praise the lord now please hold on let's let's not be distracted those of us who are trusting God for healing is a miracle service it's not just limited to healing but we're going to pray for the sick now now we're going to do this very fast and um, please those that will be ministering let's let's do it very fast it's not in how long listen let me tell you something about the anointing it's not just in how long you are touched or the frequency just a touch is enough for the anointing the same way a small drug can step into your body and that's it the wonders are done i'd like you to believe god to touch you change your life whether it's a blood disease whatever it is let's agree with you hallelujah we'll do that very very fast while we are doing that please um if you have come with your requests ushers um please help them pr department you can join them protocol let's just join and see how we can make this very fast so that at the same time we are collecting the prayer requests remember it's not a ritual um when it's time when they come to you you can hand over the request if you are yet to write yours you can quickly do that those online following us from whatever nation you can just connect your requests are already there and we're praying the power of god will touch it there too hallelujah praise the lord please i like you to be very intentional i know that most times we do this at the miracle services but be careful lest you make a ritual out of this and then at the same time waste your time i have seen the power and the glory of god um, upon my life and upon this ministry in in ways that that are humbling in ways that are powerful expect a testimony please refuse that you're not going back the way you came no matter what the medical situation is remember i told you there is a way in the sea there is a way hallelujah when i do that um we'll finish it and then we can now minister deliverance and just prophesy so that we are able to make time praise the lord father we're gathered tonight by your wisdom and your power lord we're about to minister to those who are sick and lord we trust your power to heal we trust your power to heal to the uttermost in the name of jesus anoint my hands anoint every man and woman of god who will be ministering to the sick let there be the hearing of faith let there be the walking of miracles do this and glorify yourself in the name of jesus christ praise the lord uh, father we give you all the praise let your power flow let miracles begin in this place we give you all the praise we give you all the honor in the name of jesus christ i pray amen please make sure that while you submit your prayer request be in the attitude of prayer if i were you i'll be praying in the spirit don't be distracted just because we are taking our time to pray for the sick god bless
You deserve the glory and the honor. So we lift our hearts and worship as we bless your holy name. Yes, you deserve the glory. And the honor Yes, Lord, we lift our hands and worship As we praise your holy name For you are great You do miracles so great Yes, there is no one else There is no one else like you Yes, you are great And you do miracles so great Oh, there is no one else like you Oh, there is no one else like you Sing, you deserve the glory. Say, you deserve the glory and the honor, Lord, and the honor. So we lift our hands, so we lift our hands and worship as we praise. As we praise oh, 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 yes, you deserve the glory. Worship tonight, so we lift our hands and worship as we pray. Your holy name is you to be There is no one, no one else that can touch me like you do. They can heal me, say there is no Hey! There's no one 
and every other name. Somebody say, let every other name. Jesus, take your place. Come back. 
Repeat after me in the name of Jesus. We are praying now, please. We are praying. Say in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every force from the pit of hell standing against my lifting tonight I challenge you lift your voice and begin to pray everyone lift your voice and begin to pray every force every force nothing will stop your lifting this is a season of lifting in the name of Jesus Set. Every stumble shall be broken. You were the victor's crown. Say in the name of Jesus, every recurrent pattern in my life right now, I declare you destroyed. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Challenge every recurrent pattern by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Every recurrent pattern in the name of Jesus. Every recurrent pattern. Papo Sabalaka to Pashabren Legadea. In the name of Jesus. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Every dimension of grace apportioned for me tonight. I declare that I must step into it. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Every dimension of grace. Every dimension of grace. Every dimension. Make sure you are praying every dimension, every dimension, every dimension. Say in the name of Jesus, Father, let your fire fall upon my life upon my family and destroy every planting that is not of God lift your voice and pray let your fire the visitation of your fire the visitation of your fire upon my life upon my life pray let your fire fall upon my life let your fire bring a separation lift your hands I'm about to pray for you now we are never doing the same thing every time I rebuke devils there are lives and destinies 
that are under the yokes of darkness it's time for the devil to give up are we together are you ready to shout that name that is above all names let me tell you i want you to be childlike tonight and just follow these instructions and watch the wonder working power of god in your life at the count of three i want you to shout that name jesus everywhere and as you shout that name the sword of the lord will pierce through every root of every challenge and begin to command victory for you are we together now especially for those of you who are coming here for the first time i'm ministering deliverance now every yoke of darkness that has tied anyone's life as you shout this name may the visitation of that fire are you ready now one two three i command the fire the fire of the spirit bring them up the fire of the holy ghost right now every altar and everything every high thing that is not of god i curse you now i curse you now i curse you now hallelujah i think the ground is good enough you can bring them in the name of jesus i'm praying now i'm still praying anyone's destiny that is under siege right now i stretch my hands in the name of jesus i'm seeing i'm seeing like bolts of fire falling on people if it falls on you your destiny is opening up lord where are they i stretch my hands may the visitation of fire open destinies now shake it open destinies now open destinies now open destinies now inside outside open destinies now open destinies now hallelujah i'm seeing a horn and i'm seeing fire burning it please be sensitive this is a symbol of authorities that sit over lives and families he said in Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 18 what yes thou he said four horns these are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Jerusalem against Judah so that no man does lift his head he said but I have sent four carpenters lift your hands I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus the fire of God is falling on people inside and outside in the name of Jesus anyone here Shabo Sekatos Kabariakata under any kind of demonic siege at the count of three that horn that symbol of authority that has tied your family that has tied your life it is uprooted one two three i release that fire now i release that fire now i release that fire now by the anointing of the holy ghost i decree and declare by the anointing of the holy ghost anyone here whose life is under siege be delivered now hallelujah the lord wants to visit the issue of barrenness but then he's using physical barrenness as a prophetic symbol for productivity so that you are not surprised if you are a man and the anointing still visits you the womb is the place where seed is planted that womb can be anything a woman's womb is just a type and a shadow of a system of increase there are people a barren woman is a woman whose womb cannot receive and multiply seed the way it is physically that's how it is spiritually you receive the word but it never produces it's barrenness you receive finances but it never multiplies it's barrenness lift your hands as i pray listen many people many people are going to be delivered from just this prayer you will be surprised to know that many of your requests are tied to this one prayer lift your hands i'm praying now that in the name of jesus ah, i tell you all i see is just fire that's what i'm seeing every spirit responsible for barrenness in anyone's life right now 
by the fire of the Holy Ghost I declare be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost overflow one I'm seeing three people I'm praying now I know because of time we can't let you come in but I'm seeing three people two are ladies one is a gentleman this prayer is for you there is an anointing as I'm speaking that is coming overflow one on people outside the Lord is bringing massive deliverance barrenness is a dangerous thing listen whatever you give a barren person is as well as wasting your time because it cannot grow it cannot multiply Jesus saw the fig tree it was taken from the earth taken from the earth but it was not producing in the name of Jesus I'm still praying that prayer again that any life here that Satan has rendered barren I stand by the anointing of the Holy Ghost and I decree and declare be delivered right now be delivered right now from every siege of barrenness be delivered right now be delivered right now from every siege of barrenness hallelujah Kemi, who is Kemi? Kemi. Um, I may not, maybe I may just talk to one or two people. Kemi, you are wearing red. It's like, it's a guy called Kemi. Who is that? You are wearing red. What's your name? Uh -uh, I didn't, I'm saying, this is, I'm saying, I know that Kemi is a lady's name. It's not a guy. I will pray for you. It's your hunger. This is, you are wearing red. What's your name? Your name is Kemi. Yes, sir. You are wearing red. I'll pray for you. But gentlemen, you are here. There is a hunger that you carry. Listen, you came from ah, uh, I'm seeing Cross River. Where? Yeah? Cross River. Cross River. Cross River. You yes, came. Sir. Yes, sir. The Lord is saying, I should tell you. Listen to me. Yes, sir. You came because of a hunger. Yes, sir. To truly get an anointing. Yes, sir. But you see, this message I preach was for you. Yes, sir. You heard what I'm saying? Yes, this running around to want to do ministry by force is not the way it works. The Lord Himself, He will give you an anointing, but He will give you direction. What you need is an encounter with the word and direction, but you will never go back the same. Receive that anointing a new dimension a new season my dear there is a spirit of prophecy upon your life in the name of jesus christ i stir up that spirit that dimension i open you to a realm where you begin to see and hear the sounds of the spirit in the name of jesus as i'm praying this i'm seeing number 11 the same thing that came on this lady the anointing of the spirit is looking for 11 people there is the spirit of prophecy. Where are they? I stretch my hands right now. Eleven people. Eleven people scattered inside and outside. In the name that is above all names. Receive that spirit. You need it. I stir it up from your spirit man. I stir it up from your spirit man. The grace for prophecy. Makatos Kabarakata. Sons and daughters. Stepping into dimensions of prophecy some of you you have only had dreams only dreams but i shift you to dimensions of visions prophetic visions you will never be the same i'm still praying this i'm still praying this there are people this is your call but no anointing has ever stirred it in the name of jesus i shift you in the spirit into that anointing the very anointing the seat of the prophetic i move you by grace in the name of jesus christ i activate it i activate it that dimension i'm praying i don't know why god is moving this way there are people the call of God is upon your life but you don't know it you don't know that the call of God is upon your life but tonight as a token the Spirit of God is visiting you whether you know it or not Lord where are they I stretch my hands now if the hand and the mandate of God is upon your life 
for your destiny in the area of the fivefold. I declare, let the anointing of the Spirit locate you. As it locates you, the Lord begins to prepare you. Where are they? Receive that grace. Receive that grace. Receive that grace. Abaraka toka 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 ta. Shabenda salaba seketa subria katali katosh. Hallelujah. There is a dangerous spirit. Our time is up. Hold on. But there is a spirit that I want to rebuke now. I just saw written in the air rejection. Hold on. Many of you do not know the reason why good things never reach you. You stand, you are watching and an opportunity come. Rejection is not just a state, it's a spirit. Lift your hands. Don't pray, don't do anything, just lift your hands. Hallelujah. That's the instruction the Lord is giving me. Just lift your hands, just do what I'm asking you to do. In the name of Jesus, many of you will be surprised now. There are people, it's like a yoke. I'm seeing like cowries, these cowries that they use. That's what I'm seeing. And in the name of Jesus Christ, as the power of God is smashing that rubbish, that's how many people who have been despised, been despised. The Bible says where you have been forsaken so that no man passes through you. It says you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. Right now I stretch my hands from the front to the back. Overflow one, two, three, the roadside and online. If there is anyone here under the siege of the spirit of rejection, right now, in the name of Jesus, in this silence, may the anointing of the spirit begin to bring deliverance. Right now, I'm praying, it's happening right now. Taking away that spirit from your life. Please be sensitive. We are doing a quick walk. Rejection, rejection, rejection. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Rejection. I command that spirit to leave. I'm still praying. I command that spirit to leave. I command that spirit to leave. Alongside with this, there are people. Bad luck. Good things must always turn to evil when it, hold, when it enters your hand. No matter what it is. If they give you money, something must go bad. A good opportunity it must be destroyed. You enter a relationship, something must happen. I stretch my hands right now in the name of Jesus. Makos Kabara Katosh Kele Katosiata. If there is anyone under the sound of my voice who is under this kind of siege, here at this miracle service, fire, 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 fire. I release the fire of the spirit right now from the front to the back, inside, outside. I command your deliverance right now. I command your deliverance right now. I command your deliverance right now. Keep your hands lifted and pray. Mighty things are happening in the spirit. I ask us to pray a prayer that the Lord put in my heart. Patterns. I'm still seeing it again. There are some of you, the same thing happens to every member of your family. At certain seasons, everything must happen. Either somebody dies or someone doesn't marry straight and correct. You must have a child before you get married. Or something, someone will rape you. Someone raped your mother. Someone will rape some kind of nonsense patterns. In the name of Jesus. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. Lord, I pray that as your people shout that name, every pattern that happened to the fathers that is about to replay itself in the life of your people let it be broken at the count of three one two three i declare those patterns broken now those patterns broken now those patterns broken now those patterns broken now hallelujah the spirit of delay god is taking delay from someone's life that's what i'm seeing god is taking delay i'm seeing it going delay 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 not everybody but i'm seeing god is it will surprise you after this miracle service the kind of speed that your life will enter 
delay. Hallelujah. My dear, come. This come. This your first time here. Where are you coming from? You're coming from Abuja. Yes, I want to pray for you. You had the prayer I just said we should pray. Yes. That prayer was was for you. Don't be embarrassed. Eh? There is a spirit of delay that must live your life. You are a great lady, but I see delay. Come. It's a demonic spirit. And if you are not delivered and you get up and go to Abuja just like that, it will be as if you did not come before the presence of God. But I lay my hands upon your head. And in the name of Jesus Christ, the spirit of delay, I call you by name. Let this lady go now. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit, go now. Live her life forever. In the name of Jesus. That lady wearing lime cloth, you, this one, come quickly, please. Look at me. Salvation has come to your family. The month of June. Look at me. The month of June, I'm prophesying by the Spirit, is the month for your family. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, He's changing everything. Everything completely by the Spirit of the living God. He's changing everything by the Spirit of the living God. He's changing everything by the Spirit of the living God. I'm hearing a name, Doris. I'm hearing a name Doris Doris who is Doris I'm hearing a name Doris Doris are you Doris your name is Doris I'm going to pray for you your name too is Doris that's your baby I will pray for you look at me look at me shout Jesus My dear look at me witchcraft i'm stretched the lord is just saying i should stretch my hands in front of you i stretch my hands and i declare i'm seeing an altar catching fire in the name of jesus christ i declare it by the spirit i stretch my hands that's what the lord is saying i should do i stretch my hands it catches fire now oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Doris, look at me. Where are you coming from? From Congo. From Congo. Hold my hands. Say shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Is taken from my life. Is taken from my life. Forever. Forever. Say it again. Shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Victory belongs to Jesus. Shame and reproach is taken from your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Shame and reproach is taken. Hold on, I'm not done with that. I decree and declare that shame and reproach is taken from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody's father has not been paid for 11 years. I'm seeing, I don't know what the condition is, but I'm seeing at, at 11 years or so, your father has not been paid. It's something they have been pursuing. Please make sure you are honest. Who is that? Come. Your dad, where is he? He's in Lagos. You too? Where is he? Do you believe that if I pray for you, a miracle will happen? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we make it happen by the Spirit of the living God. I decree and declare that between now and the next 90 days, let there be a miracle. Let there be a miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ. Why are you all coming? Your parents. 
no don't I, if, if i pray most of you is not it's not that word you are just coming just because you want it may be related in the name of jesus i'm i'm just praying for you as i'm touching you, you see let me let me tell you something brothers and sisters you see this touch you see this touch just this touch you see there is power in it it's just that we are very carnal people do you understand after service you can hug me and jump on me but now what is on me is what makes this touch different you see that you can you can have it is not just a touch maybe a touch for jamboree no 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 you can i can lay my hands on you right and then something can come upon you i can lay my hands upon you and then your life will change sometimes you see me just speak and you think it as as i pray like this you see watch your life and see what it becomes are, are you getting what i'm saying now that's 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 the point the word of god that you can't see it does not mean it's not resting on you when it rests on you like a hen over her, her the eggs it will stay there until there is a performance this thing you see is not just power it's authority it's authority there is authority in the spirit it's not just power it's authority are you, are you getting what i'm saying now so it is it is a grace it's a gift that god can give a man he said for i am a man under authority i say to one go it's just that many of us just sit down and we keep watching I, be, the fact that you are here within this vicinity alone let me tell you whether you are inside or outside your life will never never be the same if i never get to touch you it's just that we are carnal we are carnal so we just feel that until you make contact with the man of god your life will not no 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 no. i don't have to give you a word of knowledge the anointing that you see this anointing through words through words i can speak to you like this the word of god carries the anointing do you understand it's not just until maybe you, you make contact and lay hands and some of those things are just psychological it is the power of god as i'm speaking over your life if you believe you will be surprised are we together now yes a miracle service and we may not have all the time to minister the way we want to but this word if all i do here is to just come and speak i told you about the creative dimension of prophecy men are made by the prophetic word that is on them what is on you is what compels creation to respond to you in a certain way a man can lay hands on you and not lay anything everybody ministers according to the dimension of his grace my dear this lady looking at me come the lord is saying i should tell you what happened to queen esther in the bible will happen to you i don't know who you are but the lord is saying i should tell you that what happened to adasa queen esther in the bible i release that grace upon you in the name of jesus christ so brothers and sisters i like your heart to be open the if you come here and you are prayed for i lay hands on you and you miss the prophetic sessions you really miss the miracle service you see that you miss the prophetic session help is coming hold on the lord is showing me something help is coming i'm seeing help is coming that's what the spirit of god is saying help is coming help is coming help is coming it will surprise you help is coming when god says help is coming it means people are coming men are coming men are coming i'm saying it again men are coming this is a word for somebody help is coming in the name of jesus christ the Lord is saying I should prophesy to someone it won't read June it won't read June this is what God is saying I don't even know what I'm saying listen God gave you a word God is saying you will not enter June without that miracle happening and in the name of Jesus Christ whoever that person is I release that word let there be a performance let there be a performance in the name of Jesus Christ let there be a performance I'm seeing, I'm seeing a young man that came here
you you are not based here you came from another city and there is the call of god upon your life but i'm seeing that not only is there a call of god upon your life i'm seeing that there is an anointing i'm not saying you should come out this is there are many people that belong don't worry the anointing will will find you there is an anointing i've not done the impartation yet but there is an anointing that is coming on that gentleman it may spill over to others but it's for one you will go back there is a revival within your territory that has been allocated to you your person in the name of jesus let the anointing of the spirit find that person now You may look ordinary, said the Spirit of God, but when my grace comes upon you, I will do wonders through your life. The Lord is saying, You may look ordinary, but when my grace comes upon you, you see, the anointing of the Spirit is the maker of men, it is not about what they want to do. In the name of Jesus, whoever that gentleman is, I bring you into that grace, I bring you into that anointing. By the power of the holy spirit the lord is giving somebody a kind of anointing here listen let me describe for you how it will work if you hold someone's hand and pray on an issue it is done that's how the anointing will work if at all you hold someone's hand except you don't hold the hand of the person and pray for that person whoever must carry this anointing i stretch my hands now by the spirit in the name of jesus christ may that anointing be so lavish upon your life you will see strange testimonies as you agree with people they will note you they will note you for commanding results through prayer hallelujah let's pray for finances just allow me we'll round up I, I i i apologize already in advance i will do this very fast god is already visiting his people um there is a grace for finances i will continue to pray this until i see a manifestation of what i've seen in the spirit not only are there people here who are called just people men like um, ejimi that are called into the ministry of kingdom finance there are people who may not be called into that ministry but they are kingdom financiers because of that call and anointing upon their life the holy ghost will shift them in a certain way to grant them access you may look weak you may not have one naira in your pocket but listen i want you to believe me as i pray for you lord jesus where are these people that you are speaking to me about let the grace let the unction that makes for this kind of possibility let it be released upon them in the name of jesus christ let that grace be released upon them help him help him be sensitive gentleman please you would have injured him for nothing be sensitive huh in the name of jesus that grace i called him because the lord said i should minister to him that anointing is upon him i'm still praying there are people i'm seeing like coins being dropped on the hands of people in the spirit this is this is it like a token of that grace that call lord in the name of jesus christ i pray now everywhere in this congregation and outside if you are called into this ministry i declare skopa shalanda sagateko shalat you may not look like it but i release the grace on you may the lord align your understanding about finances may he align your understanding about business in a strange and supernatural way that will cause you to command strange abundance i declare that as a result of this prayer god will connect you to strategic individuals strategic individuals hallelujah there are people here who have please listen we're rounding up there are people here inside outside 
you have what we call the mantle of a savior you may not be the firstborn in your family but all the while a grace has been following you because you represent an altar i'm going to pray right now there are people whether you are young or old if that grace if you are the one that represents the altar of god in your family then it's time for that altar to begin to speak right now in the name of jesus the son of the living god for everyone here you represent the epicenter of the purposes of god in your family i stir up that altar i put fire upon that altar now let it begin to burn that from your secret place you begin to shift things in your family from your secret place you begin to command and manipulate realities from the realm of the spirit i make it so i declare it so in the name of jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah then i know there might be many people this may be the last personal case i'll deal with and then we'll pray there might be many people here with this case but there is a particular woman here you are barren you are a, there's a particular woman not that you are standing for someone you yourself please help them Madam, how long have you been married? 11 years. 11 years, no child. Madam, yes. how long? 7 years. 7 years. Yes. 18 years in total. You are standing here before the people of God because you believe that God can step in. You, madam? 18 years. You've Eight. been barren for how long? 18 years. 18 years. Yes. You? Yes. Madam, will you believe if I tell all three of you that according to the time of life, you will return with your children? No, 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 no. It's not amen. The question is, will you believe? Will you believe it? Madam, where are you coming from? I'm coming from Jushi. Where is that? Jushi at the back of enemies. Where are you coming from, madam? You are coming from Kaduna? Yes, sir. Who is this lady? Are you married? You've been married too? Yes, sir. You too, madam? Please, if you are not married, don't come out here. If you are coming out for... If you are, if it's, it's someone you are standing for, just remain there. Please remain. If you are standing for someone, I will pray. But if it is for yourself, madam, you too? Look at me. You are trusting God? How long have you been married? I've been married for like five years, but I have a child, but I've been trying for like three years now. You have a child yes, already? Sir. You yes, just sir. want another one? Yes, sir. It's all right. I'll pray for you. These ones don't have any. The devil is a liar. Madam, don't be embarrassed. You are not standing before. There's nothing to be ashamed of. You too. You too. You are trusting God. How long have you been married? Yes. Two years. No, you you had a child you were even rejoicing and you had a miscarriage yes. when last year last year yes. and from that time this has affected you yes, i have to pray there's something wrong with your stomach yes. the doctor already told you i wouldn't say it in the open but then this is what is killing the baby hold on madam um you had miscarriage not even in tw in 2000 and in 2014 child, uh, that's what inside I'm saying. My you had a, they had to go and remove the baby yes because the baby died inside pieces, your stomach yes the baby pieces like yes. this inside your stomach yes sir. god is going to give you a child Amen. 
my dear look at me this lady the mercy of god needs to speak for you you, you love jesus you love jesus i'll pray for you but you are not in need of child what you need is mercy the mercy of god many of us don't know what the mercy of god is the mercy of god is not for sinners the mercy of god is his dimension that causes him to veto whatever limitation it is to come to help you so when we say mercy it's not just because you have to be a sinner there are certain dimensions of god that are only revealed to you at the platform of his mercy he said thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the time to favor her yea the set time is come i want to pray and prophesy to all of you and agree with you in the name of jesus christ please go back and tell your various husbands that you were prayed for i, I love men i respect husbands but many husbands don't love jesus they don't know jesus after their wives return like this and say my husband we just went for a program they don't know what program and they cancel out all of these things it takes two to agree are we together in the name of jesus christ madam put your hand in your stomach i take away this demonic thing let it go now in the name of jesus it disappears madam i pray for you the lord opens your womb in the name of jesus madam by the grace of god you carry your child in the name of jesus christ I remove every growth from your stomach in the name of Jesus I declare that you return with your miracle madam look at me God is going to use you Amen. you are not just going to give birth to a child the hand of God is on your life it doesn't look like it but there is nothing in this life that will ever satisfy you except the service of God you will love God and serve him and with this miracle God is going to give you yes. every other woman you pray for yes, over sir. the issue of the fruit of the womb Amen, you will sir. see that God will open Amen. up your soul in the name of Jesus Christ father you will arise and have mercy upon this my precious sister in the name of Jesus the voice of accusation that speaks against you I silence it by the mystery of the blood now go and have your child it's over in the name of Jesus Christ it's over my dear look at me go and prepare you have a child now in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit let the grace of God speak for you madam I pray for you help her please it's over right now carry your child in Jesus name please stretch your hands towards the altar and let's pray stretch your hands in one minute you for yourself madam okay in the name of Jesus Christ it's all right madam no problem in the name of Jesus Christ I pray um, you are trusting God for a child in the name of Jesus Christ somebody's sister is going to have twins hold on hold on hold on the power of God will come on that person now as I'm speaking for the sake of your sister carrying twins this is twins the Lord himself hmm. there's one more person left I'm hearing the voice of children babies crying when it stops then I know that it's over I'm still hold on I'm still hearing it there is still one more person family I'm like I'm hearing the voice of children Lord in the name of Jesus wherever that family is I pray that you locate them right now by the Spirit of the Living God you locate them right now you locate them right now I'm still praying you locate them right now in the name of Jesus 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 stretch your hands and let's pray please begin to pray one minute and say father whatever I have dropped here just keep her there I'll pray for her that's all right begin to pray in the spirit and declare that whatever you have dropped here turns to your testimony in the name of Jesus I'm laying hands here and I'm agreeing with you impossible situations 
Mabrakato Zadia Shana Hasana Malakatosh Reketekateke Barahasosia Embrakato Shala Barakatos Kadebrendekateke Latosiata Unto you that answers prayers shall all flesh come Mabre Zagado Janeke Lando Safria Hasabadash Ingredo Zedeko Shabarakatos Kiyadabalash Please pray Lord turn around our captivities like the streams in the Negev in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ let them say among the hidden the Lord has done great things for them the Lord has done great things for us whereof we are glad we sow prayers in tears and we declare that we reap in joy Lord I bow my knees to you and I cry visit your people 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 Hallelujah. This prayer you see we pray here is a very deep spiritual mystery. It's not a ritual. It's a revelation. Sometimes when I travel and I go, the Lord instructs me to do the same thing there. And the amazing testimonies this for me is one of the most thorough ways of ministering to people because this is a summation of the your truest desires because you wrote them by yourself is a representation of your pain and your expectations this is you standing before god through your request and i decree and declare as i stand and step upon this request i declare rise above every challenge in the name of Jesus Christ the same way I'm stepping on this in the name of Jesus that is how you are stepping on every situation I turn every request in this place into your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ hear me some of you it will be like you are dreaming the way you will see doors open in your life in the name of Jesus Christ every impossible situation represented here I cry to the God who is the God of this ministry that he will arise in power and surprise you for all those who have dropped their request online in the name of Jesus Christ the same grace that is visiting these requests is visiting their request in the name of Jesus by the anointing of the Holy Spirit let there be miracles in Jesus name please lift your hands everyone let me pray for you right now in the name of Jesus Christ listen you see every ministry let me tell you this it's an uncomfortable truth but it's true every ministry rises and stops at the spiritual level of lifting of the man of god wherever you stop spiritually as a man of god that's where the ministry rises it's impossible to lead a ministry that is higher than your own level of grace and anointing it doesn't work that way it can't work sustainably that means that when the man of god shifts in anointing and rises it means that everyone genuinely committed to that grace and that vision not based on your personal um, your personal press but by the implication of connection you should also rise do, do we agree do you believe that yes I have seen the grace and the glory of God and the authority of the kingdom multiply and rise in my life this year like never before and I want to pray for you in the name of Jesus right there where you are inside and outside and all those connected wherever you are spiritually I prophesy to you rise and I shift you to a new dimension I shift you to a new dimension you have worked in miracles before but in the name of Jesus, may your hand do wonders. You have taught the word accurately before. But in the name of Jesus, may your tongue from tonight become the pen of a ready writer. 
in the name of jesus christ you have handled some level of finances before but i shift you into figures that you have never seen before in the name of jesus christ you have experienced favor before but i stand here in the name of jesus and i declare a new order of favor you have had god before but i program your ears to hear deeper dimensions of the voice of god i pray for everyone here inside and outside the mantle that causes men to be honorable may that grace come upon you may that grace come upon you in the name of jesus christ listen this ministry has never gone up and come down never not once it keeps going from glory to glory i declare let that be the definition of your life from today spiritually financially academically for those who are students i decree and declare the grace for extraordinary excellence i release upon you the grace for extraordinary excellence i release upon you anyone here trusting god for a job a noble job i stretch my hands between now and next miracle service return with your testimony in the name of jesus christ and anyone here due for promotion i decree and declare by the finger of god step into a new dimension of promotion the fire that is upon your altar that is the secret of your life the secret of every man's glory is the fire that burns upon his altar when nothing is burning you will just be a talkative for nothing you will read and teach and nothing will happen i pray for you in the name of jesus the mystery that preserves fire upon the altars of men let it work for you let it work for you i found the calls of your prayer life i found the calls of your spiritual life i found the calls of your word life this is a prayer many people don't desire i pray for a baptism of spiritual hunger i say it again a baptism of spiritual hunger that the lord will expand your appetite for spiritual things every kind of arrival mentality every kind of spiritual complacency where there is no in there is no desire to press for the deeper things of god satisfied by the little results here and there i declare that the lord plants a fresh hunger the hunger that can take you on a three days fast just to study the word and pray in the name of jesus christ some of us the grace to fast has died you fast by 10 you are yawning your life away and you can't pray i pray for you now in the name of jesus the spirit of gluttony and uncontrolled lust for food i cause it from your life in the name of jesus christ and finally i pray for you in this strange season where god is lifting men and changing their stories as i'm praying for you i'm praying this one for myself too in the name of jesus may you rise to a level where all those who knew you will turn and say this one is the finger of god in the name of jesus christ I'm calling on people who want to surrender their heart to Jesus now. Please, everyone stand. Please, everyone stand. No move. Let me tell you something. One of the assignments of the church is to harvest souls for the kingdom. We must be passionate and desperate and intentional about souls coming to Jesus. Are we together? There are people here who are saying apostle 
if you will lead me to Jesus I'm not too proud I'm not a rebel I can come to him genuinely please listen carefully overflow three overflow two one by the roadside and those who are following online the church is gradually becoming very very unresponsive to the need for salvation you are a man of God here take the issue of the salvation of souls seriously if you are not saving souls as a church you are this in fact is sin it's not just wrong it's not just disobedience it's sin it is important that we continue to partner with the spirit that people come to Jesus it's not just a ritual to show we are spiritual it is the only way that their lives can be salvaged first eternally and then to live a life of victory here are we together there are people here you may have been born from a Christian background a number of you love Jesus Christ but you are saying man of God I have never truly made a commitment for Jesus I have I've seen people do all this but tonight I want to make that decision some of you are saying man of God I love Jesus but I need a renewal in my life I just need a fresh touch I know that my life is not the way it used to be and I want to straighten out my ways with God if you are here and you belong to these two categories aside from overflow three I'll just request for time's sake that you move forward to the front of your projector screen overflow one overflow two the roadside and inside here I want you to come out right where I am here wherever you are God bless you quickly please we have one minute for this wherever you are Jesus is speaking to you you must be born again no one will force you but you have to win this war tonight you have to win this war tonight God bless you quickly come boldly come like one who is coming to receive an award don't come as if you are attending a funeral this is a miracle of miracles God bless you apostle what if people know me and they see me leave all those people this is the business of you and God make your way to the front quickly those coming from outside please let's clear the way for them so that they hurry up let's clear the way for them God bless you God bless you as you come quickly God bless you as you come you need Jesus please don't come out here to pretend come out genuinely from your heart you must be born again every single one of us had to pass through that process Jesus said I am the door not a door the door the door the only door every other route is a, is, is is not correct you have to follow through the door hallelujah thank you so much ladies and gentlemen for coming out to make this declaration i want you to know that this is a very noble declaration lift your right hand after me and say this passionately and truthfully say lord jesus if you're joining them please come quickly join them say lord jesus i love you say it again i love you with all my heart i believe that you are the son of god that you died for me you shed your blood for my sin tonight I receive you I receive your life I as I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life in the name of Jesus I move forward ever and backward never the grace to stay the grace to grow the grace to be useful is mine tonight in Jesus name Lord Jesus I stretch my hands towards these precious people they have come before your people making declarations making commitments to live for you to love you to serve you I pray that the grace that makes this a possibility let it be released upon their lives in the name of Jesus I declare your sins forgiven I declare that the power of sin the power of Satan is broken over your life you go from glory to glory in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen I appreciate you I want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands all of you just follow him in concert there will be a group of people to just talk to you address you very quickly and then you will be back to your seat let's appreciate the Lord for tonight hello scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe 
that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.